Captain. Chris. We got him. Get them into their posts. Aye, aye, Captain. They're hauling away. We need to go faster, Chris. Let's feel the sails. Don't like this, Chris. This Torado asshole isn't going to play us uh, straight. I'm telling you, something's off about this whole deal. Why you kill one of his own people? It doesn't make sense. We can't trust him. Calm down, Marcus. You know I don't trust anyone. There's no way I'm going to let this slime bag slip away without paying me. So lead the way. Yeah, I know. But this is bad business. A man willing to kill his own people for personal gain is no kind of man at all. Let's get what we're owed 
and then call it quits with him. Perhaps I'm just getting too old for this kind of bullshit. Could be I need a break. Back in St. Lucia, it's just me and my distillery. <laughs> Same routine, day in and day out. You know, it's been a long time since you visited home, Chris. <laughs> and what would I do there? Keep you company while you watch the barrels mature? You liked St. Michel well enough when you were a boy. Speaking of rum, you remember Captain Franz Peterson? He came by recently for his uh, supplies. He's been asking for you. Says he has a problem we could use your help with. Dutchmen drink like fools, but Franz is a reliable man. Not like that Spanish dog, Torado. We're close. Keep your blade ready. I see you brought one of your colleagues. So, how was your trip? I'm not complaining. Mm. And how is Susalut? How is our friend? Busy exploring the bottom of the sea. You know, I tend to steer clear of places like this. Pirates, murders, whores, depravity and filth everywhere you look. Everything that's wrong with this city all gathered in one place. I kept my end of the bargain. Now it's your turn. On the other hand, if you can rely on anyone in this city, it's you people. Greed makes you predictable. It makes you malleable. For the promise of money, you animals would gut your own mothers, wouldn't you? <laughs> Lucky for you, I don't share your high Spanish morals. If I did, I wouldn't be able to kill your fellow officer for you, would I? Now give me my money. Indeed. You know, another benefit of dealing with your kind is that you're so easily used, then tossed away. Christopher Raven, you stand accused of murdering an officer of the Spanish Navy. The penalty for your crime is death. <laughs> You're gonna regret this, Toronto. Kill him! There's more of them coming. Hold the door. I'll take care of them. Got it. Behind the door, Chris. We're going to have to split up and meet at the harbor. Go upstairs and try to find a way out. I think I saw a balcony up there. And what about you? Don't worry. I'll figure something out. Besides, they're not after me. Aren't you lucky? See you on the other side. <laughs>
Well, that went well. I guess we should avoid San Juan for a while. Agreed. Might be a good time to visit home after all, eh? At least until you decide to murder another officer of the Navy. Hey, what, what's going on, eh? You sons of bitches trying to steal my ship, eh? That's what's going on? Nope. You're... you're not? No, everything's good here. Lay back down and get some sleep. Oh. Thanks. Hmm. Marcus. Set sail for St. Lucia. Found something interesting during the fight. Hmm. Found something? And here I thought we were fighting for our lives. It looked to me like you were trying to save your own neck. My neck? Seem to remember saving yours a few times back there. <laughs> when I was wrestling with one of those bastards, this coat ripped loose. Mm. It's a note. Mm. It says they're looking for a man named Lancaster. Lancaster? The weapons dealer? I don't know another one. Mm. Man's got his fingers in every pie in the Caribbean. But if this is true, he's staying in Bridgetown now. Seems that's where our friend Torado is going to be looking for him. Bridgetown, eh? If you're looking to get even, confront him there. Better there than in the Spaniard's own backyard. Less messy that way. I got business in Barbados. A large group of my people are gathering soon, and I should be there. Are gathering? I thought you were talking about taking some time off. Guess my bears will have to take care of themselves for a while longer. But you're right. We've been on the run for so long. I've almost forgotten what normal life on land looks like. No offense to you, of course, Christopher. You're a grown man. You can make your own decisions. That's nice of you to know this. So what will you do? Mm. Are you heading to Bridgetown? To Port Royal Hoars give you the burning drip. This Dorado, I won't let him off my hook. But I'll give you a ride to Barbados. Least I could do for you saving my neck. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm parched. Tavern? First sensible thing you've said all day. Lead on. And I said sorry. I didn't mean to spill it on your shoes. Sure. I understand, you little fuck. Let me show you how much I understand.
cutlass, right? Get moving or I'll make you. Aye, aye, sir. I want to see you working that dig like a whore works for a wealthy man's purse. We're feeling, lads. We're feeling. Yes, sir. Better pick up the pace. What the devil do you want? William Terrell, I challenge you for the captaincy of this vessel. You challenge me? You dare challenge me, you bloody sod! I'm Captain Christopher Raven. I have the right of challenge by the rules of the coast. You think you have rights? Vermin like you have no rights. Donovan, get this worthy piece of rubbish out of my sight! You little sheep! Once I'm done with this horse, son, I'll skin you alive! <laughs> Not at all. When do we leave? Soon. Be prepared. I'm always prepared. Oh, I almost forgot. Yes? We need to go to Bridgetown first. Why? A group of Maroons have gathered there. I need to talk to my people. It's urgent. All right. We'll head there first, then. Good. Let's set sail! We need to go to Bridgetown, Chris. Radio weapons. We're going aboard. Go and fetch Marcus. Aye, aye, sir.
It's Peterson. Gods, they've been savage. You look like you've seen the devil himself. the dead overboard. Lay them down. Make it decent. All the cargo's been looted. We have no business here. But I got back some of these. <laughs> My own bottles. At least he had a decent drink before he died. Fate always sees fit to take the best among us. Peterson was a good man. Now this Torado bastard... To hell with Torado! Didn't you see? See what? That symbol! Your man Peterson had the same symbol carved into him that my father did. The bastards that killed my family, they're back. Chris, this cannot be. You know the Devil's Tines died when the earthquake hit, along with half of Port Royal. Neville and his men have been shark food for years. What's wrong with you, man? You saw my father's body when you carried it from that bloody beach, didn't you? You saw the mark they carved into him? We... we buried him together! God damn it. You still have that accursed thing with you? Christopher, the Tynes are dead. Anyone with a blade can carve a mark. You of all men should understand. Those bastards took everything from me. My family deserves vengeance. And all this time, I thought it was lost to me. And you want to cast it off as a coincidence? You think it's some random fool drawing symbols with a blade? This symbol? Are you serious? Christopher, the men who murdered your family are gone. If you don't stop this, you'll end up chasing whispers of pirates across the Caribbean like that madman Santorio. You're absolutely right, Marcus. If anyone knows anything about this, it'd be Santorio. Are you mad, Christopher? He's a pirate hunter. He kills people like you for a living. For pleasure. And what better man to help me track a pirate? But how do we find him? Not this time. This fire will burn you, just as it burned your father. Maria, she'll know how to find Santorio. What can that little hooker know? other than pleasuring the men of Bridgetown and that filthy den of hers. I'll need supplies. Chris, you go on ahead. Let's meet after you've had a chance to talk to Maria. Well, where can I find you? I'll wait for you outside the brothel. What about you, Marcus? Where are you going? I'm going to meet some of my friends. Friends? <laughs> what friends? Maroons, Chris. See you then.
betray you. Hey, you! I mean, sir! What? Damn your scary. It's that hook and that scowl. <laughs> Raven, right? The new captain of the Serpent? I'm here about one of your crew. Goes by the name of Donovan? He's one of my men. What's the problem? He in some kind of trouble? Well, yes and no. Yes as in he owes my employers a rather large favor, and no as in you can make this debt go away. Let me guess. This debt goes unpaid, and Donovan's a dead man. You guess right. So here's the deal. There's these papers, see? And they could cause some trouble for my employers. My employers are the same people Donovan owes this favor to. So why ask me? We'd ask Donovan, except he's under your orders. We respect the chain of commands, Captain, but if you can't help us resolve this, Donovan may have an unfortunate, but completely avoidable, accident. And you need me to get these documents for you? Not for me. It's for an acquaintance of my employers over in St. Lucia. Look, I'm sure you're a busy man, and I have to report back. What do you say? I'll do it, but only if it pays well. Of course it does. As it happens, some Spaniards got their dirty little manos on some rather delicate documents. Recover any papers bearing this mark, then bring them to our mutual friend in St. Lucia. I'll mark their route on your map. Don't destroy the ship, just board it. If it sinks, so do Donovan's chances of leading a healthy life. Get the documents to our friend in St. Lucia, get paid, and Donovan's debt is cleared. Nipper of an idiot, I hope you hang. You blind or do you want to be? Don't bet on it. Just show me what you've got. Anything you need, you'll find it here.
trees and a wimpy one at that. Hey, Marcus. Well met, sir. Well met. A fine mug that was. If only for Thanks. another good day. Hey, Marcus. How is it, Sparta? How is it? Sorry. How do you do? How do you do, madam? Not me. Maybe just like me. Strange fellow, that. Scurvy son of a whore. Thinks he's better than me. there. You look like a man of the sea. I've got something that may interest you. I doubt that. Doubt not. I have a ship for sale. A small galleon. Okay. Why are you selling it? Well, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I'm in debt in a bad way. I can't seem to keep an honest crew together, and I've got to pay or I'm in trouble. All right. What's the price? Well, the ship is worth 10,000. <laughs> I don't have time for this. Wait, wait, fine. I'll sell for 8,000, not one coin less. If the ship's in good condition, it's a deal. What do you want, Private? I heard you've got a job for a captain. Right. Perhaps we do. You can come in, but don't do anything stupid. The General's in the garden. Look what we have here, Mr. Christopher Raven. What brings a pirate such as yourself across my threshold? There's talk in Bridgetown that you're looking to hire a pirate captain. What's the job? Yes, indeed we are. But I must first ask, why are you interested in working in His Majesty's service, Mr. Raven? Gold spends the same no matter who I get it from. So... What do you need from me, General Blackthorn? Quite. Let's see. Your first undertaking concerns a shipment of cannonballs to be delivered to a pirate by the name of Francis Ash. He lives in the pirate settlement on Redonda. Go to the shipwright here in Bridgetown. He will provide the cargo. Sounds easy enough. What's the pay? Of course. You'll be paid promptly upon your return. Let's say, 1,000 reales. All right, General. I'll go and get the job done. What a wretch! Oh no! Oh shit! It's Raven! Raven? What are you doing in Bridgetown? I, I was gonna... I, um... 
Listen, I know I owe you money, and I'll get it. I will. Things haven't been going too good lately. You know, since my fiance died. You, you, re you remember her? Oh, yes, I do. You had her whoring for your next tankard of rum, if I remember right. I, I, she was just a really friendly gal. Look, I'll get the money. I just need some time. Time? Of course. I'm not unreasonable. You've got the time it takes for me to draw my sword. Welcome, sir. How may I help you? I've come to pick up special cargo from you. General Blackthorn sent me. I'll send some people to load the cargo onto your ship, sir. What else can I do for you? Guess you need your boat repaired. Guess you need your boat. Well, come in, come in. Don't stand at the damn door all day. Are you Lancaster? Who else would be standing behind the counter of my own shop? You see another man behind the counter here? I'm being robbed. Come in, why don't you? I'm already inside. Well, anyone can see that. I'm standing here talking to you, ain't I? I... what? Say... You don't have the least bit of Spanish in you, do you? <laughs> We're going to get along just fine. 
Listen, can I come in and talk business, or do I have to shout from here while your guards crowd me the whole time? Well, I'll admit, I'm a bit confused. You said yourself you are already inside. You're an odd one, but sure. Stand down a bit, boys. No need to lean on the man. He's only armed to the teeth, after all. There you go. Now that you have all the room in the whole West Indies, why don't you state your business so I can get back to mine? I'm here because I found a piece of paper with your name on it. Well now, I suppose that practically makes us kin, don't it? No, no, don't bother telling me your name. Just tell me about those papers right away. My name is Christopher Raven. This paper was dropped in a brawl with a group of Spanish soldiers led by a man named Torado. I came here to ask you if... Now this I'd like to hear more about. Tell me, did you manage to kill any of those Spanish pigs with that steel hand of yours? Bloody fearsome is what that thing is. Tell me. The fight went my way or I wouldn't be standing here. Now do you know this man Torado or not? You're sure? He's in the Royal Spanish Navy, but he's as crooked a bastard as they come. You've got no idea why he might be looking for you. Listen, I have my own business with Torado, and if he's on his way here, I've got a proposition for you. I'm not looking for work. I'm looking for Torado. Listen, I've got plenty of coin, and I'm not asking you to do much at all. It's not healthy to trifle with me, old man. All right, what do you need? Unbelievable. Buccaneers stealing. Sounds like he really let you down. Where do I come in? Toronto. We have a deal. See you.
Shall we trade? Back already? Don't you still have a ship to find? Just board it and recover the documents. Then you can go to our friend in St. Lucia, get paid, and help Donovan stay healthy. isn't it? Keep me company for a while. I'd love to, but I'm busy, and Maria has her eyes everywhere. the sex trade going today? Moving the men smoothly in and out? Always. I had to turn down more marriage proposals than usual today. Not all men have hearts of stone. I really would be a bastard to pull a classy lady like you away from all this extravagance. Since your pants are still buckled, I assume you have a different reason for being here today? What do you know about Santorio? You're not answering my question, Maria. Maria, I need to find him. What about your girls? Talk to Millie. She used to have a regular John, a trader that was always bragging about doing business with Santorio. He's dead now, but Millie's still with me, and he was practically in love with her. Some men speak more freely between the sheets than they do anywhere else.
When am I not well behaved? Where is this Pete? In the hallway. You went past him. He's with Millie. I'll be back soon. No doubt you will be. That's right, baby. Old Pete's gonna give you a proper ride. Mm, why don't we go into the room, Pete? I've been waiting for you all day. What? You ain't enjoying my company? Of course not, Pete. You know you're my favorite. Uh, get up, Millie. We're not finished hey, What are you doing? I'm not done with that, bitch. Hey, don't you turn your back to me, boy -o. Calm down, friend. I just need her for a minute. She'll be back on your lap in no time. Have a drink on me. Yes. Ah, are you fucking bastard? Ah, now you listen to me. The sooner you tell me what I want to know, the sooner you can go over there and take care of that piece of shit. What do you want, Christopher? You're costing me money. You're going to lose more than money if you don't shut up and listen to me. You used to have a regular, a trader that dealt with Santorio. Do you ever talk about where they'd meet? You're hurting me. You know we don't talk about what goes on with our customers. You better let me go before Maria sees you. Who do you think sent me over here? Now tell me what I want to know. <laughs> All right, he used to talk about someplace south of Puerto Rico. I can't remember what it's called. Think harder. Ow! I don't remember. It's a long time ago. Something like Stargazer Strait. Stargazer so Strait? Yes, that's it. He said it's north of there. He'd laugh about how no one thinks to look in the teeth, that everyone sails right past it. Okay, that's all I know. Can I go now? Good girl. <sighs> Good luck getting through the teeth, you Oh, fuck. yeah? And what do you know about it, Pete? Jesus, Pete, shut up! What do you mean by that, Pete? No, don't! Enlighten me. You should start talking, Pete, before I reload this and try for that knee again. Stop! You There's a special fight you need to get through the rocks. They'll shoot you dead without it. And where do I find this special flag? Arthur Satchmore's got one, but he was clubbed to death in the street weeks ago. Go see his widow. She lives in town. Maybe she's got it. Well, now, that wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> Thanks for the tip, Pete. <laughs> you can keep the coin. Pretty little blush it is. Not that you need one. Please, sir. Jesus, Christopher. Always the loveliest ones that fly first. I do hope to see you again, though. Guess you won't be coming in here anytime soon. And Millie's just lost her afternoon session with Pete. Can't keep it hard with a hole in your hand. Oh, forget about it. It was worth it hearing that pig squeal. I guess most of the girls enjoyed it, too. You certainly have a way with people. Of course you do. See you, Christopher. Christopher, I've been looking all over for you. 
I guess this means you're in trouble. You boys can't be in a room together for five minutes without starting a brawl, can you? Ah, you know how it is. Damn gods come by, such our stuff, shove us around. One things lead to another, and some of the younger fellows start shoving back. We can use some help. Marcus sent me to find you. Figures. He knows you lousy lot are the closest thing I've got to friends around here. Lousy lot? I remember that. If we get out of this alive, come on. Chris, if not for you... Bastards came on quick. Screw them. So, what did you learn from Maria? I need to talk to Amanda, Arthur Satchmore's widow. Her husband had a flag we can use to get past Santorio's guards if we can find it. Well, go and talk to her. Any idea how you're going to get the flag? I'll figure something out. I'm sure you will. I'll be here for a while. You mean you're coming with me to meet Santorio? No, what for? I am needed here. Good luck. Stay sharp. I'd love to, but I'm busy, and Maria has her eyes everywhere. Who are you? What 
What are you doing in my backyard? Mrs. Satchmore. Who wants to know? I'm an old friend of Arthur's. Oh, a friend, are you? Too bad. He died without a cent. And I've got the depths hanging over me head to prove it. I don't think you understand. No, you're the one who doesn't understand. Arthur had no friends, only greedy vultures who used him for his money. So if you're one of those, you're too late. He's gone. Never again will anyone be able to take advantage from his generosity. Actually, I'm here because I owed him money. But tell me, when did my old friend die? Oh, not too long ago. So, just how much are we talking about? So rare these days to see an honest man who actually pays his debts. You flatter me, miss. But there's a problem. Without Arthur here, I'm afraid I can't give you the money I owe him. What do you mean you can't? Everything he owned now is mine, and here I am! Well, the thing is, I don't have the money on me. That's the point. I was going to need a favor from Arthur in order to retrieve it. But if he's not here to help me... No. I'm afraid there's nothing else I can do. Unless... Unless what? There has to be a way. Well, uh, I suppose. But no. You wouldn't have it. He wouldn't have kept it. Not after all that time. No. Forget I said anything. But I told you! Everything he owns is now mine! What are you looking for? Oh, it was a flag he used on his ship. A special one that would grant access to a certain port, which is where the man with the money is now. Ah, uh, I see. He doesn't want you to find him. But we may be in luck. I was planning to throw out his old rags anyway, but I have another time. I can't even use them as tablecloths. They smell horrid. I'll be happy to wait. God, they stink. Worse than I remembered. Anyway, this looks a bit like a flag. Take it. I'm not going to be using it, that's for sure. I'll be happy to. It'll remind me of Arthur. Rest assured, I'll soon be back with your money. You're a true gentleman, sir. Such a rare sight these days. You're trying to take something that belongs to me. Too late, friend. I've already got it. Liar. She would never lower herself. She's a decent woman, and there's no way a filthy pirate like you would ever have a chance with her. She? Oh, you mean... Well, there's enough Amanda for all of us, don't you think? I'm going to kill you, you bastard!
下死にじゃばう下死に Captain Ravon? What? You're Captain Ravon, aren't you? State your business before I get irritated. You don't know me, but I've been looking for you for some time. I need your help. You and everyone else. What do you want? My name is Arche Accor. And I'm representing the Akko family. My father died recently and left the family a map in his will. The map supposedly leads to some buried and personal items and family heirlooms, mostly things that are valuable to our family, but wouldn't be worth much to others. What's this got to do with me? I've heard that you are a shrewd and resourceful captain. My family has pulled their money and are willing to pay you 200 gold for my safe passage to and from the island on the map. Fine. But I don't have time to watch after you. And my ship's got no room for land rats. I'll go get it and bring it back here. Captain. I may be a stranger to the ocean, but I'm no fool. I will come with you, or there's no deal. The family is simply asking for my safe passage, nothing more, and at a sizable profit to you. Doesn't sound worth my time. Find someone else. Captain Ravon, please reconsider. It has to be you. What I mean is, I won't be any extra work for you or your crew, and the reward is high. All right, fine. Just you, there and back. Excellent. I have some last minute preparations to make, but I'll meet you by your ship when you're ready to set sail. This will be a very... Informative trip. Captain, I'm looking forward to it. Right. Be at my ship when I arrive, 
or I'm leaving you behind. Count on it. Brother, I've got a job for you. Quick, get over here. I'm not your brother, and I don't need your job. Fuck off. <laughs> Typical. All right, then. Throw away easy money. See if I care. What kind of job? The kind that pays well. My name's Jean Ledoux. And I need to get out of the harbor without being sunk to the bottom of the damn ocean. There's a couple of assholes out there that think they can steal what's mine. They know I've got to sail out of here sooner or later, but they won't be expecting me to have company. You fire a few cannonballs at them, they'll open up on them while they're distracted, and they'll duck and run, guaranteed. Then we meet up, and I'll pay you for your help. Hell, I'll even restock all your munitions, too. How's that for a deal? Why are these men trying to kill you? They're my business partners, if you can call them that. Then loaf around all day while I make all the sales. Then. They expect me to split the profit down the middle? When I finally told them to go to hell? One thing led to another. And now, they've been floating out there going on two days. Cannons loaded. You can't reason with them? Reason with them? Those bastards are trying to kill me. Let them reason with a cannon volley. All right, let's go. Good man, just set sail, and I'll be right behind you. You'll see them once we get beyond the harbor. Hey man, freedom for everyone, you know? You gotta... Man, it's... it's hot out here. Uh, hey, you wanna help me with something? But first, I gotta know how you feel about freedom. You know, being fucking free. How I feel about freedom? It's... good. Well, open your eyes, brother. Because those very freedoms are under assault. My name is Shaggy, man. I need to deliver some of my finest medicine down to the docks, you know? A couple of the local tobacco shop boys have been giving me a hard time. And these guys are really not being calm at all. They think I'm stealing their business. And I'm saying, what? No, I'm not. You probably are bad for their business. You both sell things to smoke. Plus, you look pretty easy to intimidate. Is that what it is? Man, they beat the shit out of me last time I went through here. They said they'd do it again if they see me. Just really not calm guys at all. 
Say, that's a great hat you got, man. Great fucking hat. I understand how they feel. Something about you makes me want to hear your bones snap. Man, you are intense. I bet nobody messes with you. Which is exactly what I need. Hey, man, you should come with me. Yeah, you know, you protect me. I don't get beaten again. My shipment gets to the docks on time. And you make a little something for yourself. This is the best plan I've ever had, man. You paying in gold? Absolutely. Or I can pay you in my fine green wares, if you prefer. They smoke like a dream. Yeah, I can watch your back. But the pay better be right. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear that, man. Because the freedom-hating brutes I'm talking about are pretty much right behind you. Well, look at this. Our favorite junkie. We told you to sell that skunky rubbish somewhere else, mate. Rubbish? I grow the finest greens anywhere. It's your tobacco that's not, you know, uh, good. Now I thought we told you we don't need some butterfly-chasing Nancy stealing our business. Seems like you have a hard time following directions, don't you? This time, we're not just gonna smash your face, we're gonna burn up your business. Maybe then you'll earn some respect. You better rethink that course, mates. My new friend here doesn't take kindly to people threatening me. Oh, is that right? It doesn't matter how many dirty pirates Shaggy here hires to protect him, tobacco runs this area. That means when we tell someone to stop selling herbs, they stop. Hey, boys. Looks like this pirate over here wants a lesson. You sure you want to make trouble? Shaggy is right. You guys need to relax. Smart move, asshole. Now beat it. Thanks, brother. Those brutes shouldn't be bothering me anymore. Maybe you should find a different route to the docks from now on, just in case. Nah, they're good and scared. I appreciate the help. Hey, uh, I never got your name. My name is Pay Me. Pay Me? That's like a foreign name, or... Hey, I get it. Like money. Pay Me. <laughs> That's funny, man. You're pretty funny. Except when you're stabbing everyone. Not then, but, uh, when you're not, you know. Don't bet on it.
Shall we try it? Guess you need your boat to repair. Hips. No, master, you dumb. No, master, you dumb. Aye, aye, 
access. Our mutual friend from Bridgetown says hello. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Can I, um... 
If you've got the coin, you can do whatever you want. Fine, fine, yeah. Take it. You're a little short. Our friend promised me twice as much. You trying to cheat me? Because that is a very, very stupid thing to do. No, no. But that's a lot of coin. Unless you want to end up like those Spaniards, you'll give me what you owe. All right, fine. Keep your blade in its sheath. Here. Aren't you forgetting something? Ah, oh, right. And tell Donovan we're even. <laughs> Yes, you need your boat. Not to worry. A two-legged shark. <laughs>
believe it. These lazy bombs around here must have too much money. Why is that? There's an easy job to do. There's good coin in my pocket, and no one's interested. All I need is for someone to tell Morel in St. George's that I can make it on time. That is cash in hand. Anyone with a ship could do it. Who will they? No. Not for old Diego, no. I might be interested, but not now. Really? Do tell! I said later. My name is Christopher Raven. I'm acquainted with the late Arthur Satchmore. We all have our vices. Normally, I try to interest you in some trading, but today I have a more unusual proposition for you. I'm sure you've heard there's a new threat to the supply routes as of late. I hear you're a man who enjoys dealing with the threats. Captain Neville, and the Devil's Tines. Ah, so you believe the rumors, do you? You think the Devil has returned to the Caribbean? I don't think. I know. No. What does that have to do with anything? Proposing an alliance, your man and mine, to take down Neville and the Times. There's a debt that needs to be paid. Neville just doesn't know it yet. A job? You've got it wrong, Santorio. I'm not looking for work. I'm looking for an ally. If you aren't going to keep your own waters clean, then I'll do it myself. So, pirate, as much as I hate to admit it, you got the point. Never is back, and he's been giving me and my men a bit of trouble. He's been careful, though. No one seems to know anything about where the notorious bastard is, or what he's doing. But you've learned something, right? What about his right-hand man, this Kensington? I do have some information, and I have men out there attempting to gather more. But first, I have a task for you. If it brings me closer to Neville, so be it. What do you need done? I've had a bit of a disagreement with the governor in St. George's. The French wanted to pay me to turn a blind eye to some piracy. So what's the problem? I took these scoundrels down anyway. So, I have a man in St. George's who feeds me information. A civil servant working close to the governor. A while back, he suddenly went silent. I need you to find out what happened to him, but don't mention Toussaint directly. If he's been compromised, those French bastards don't need any more help tracing him back to me. Here, give this message to Toussaint, if he's still alive. Fine. Make sure your men give my ship a wide berth on the way out of here.
One more thing you might find useful. On the opposite shore of my island, there is a swift current that appears quite deadly. However, if you sail at it steadily, the tide will pull your ship through a passageway that leads directly to my docks. It will save you time, and you won't have to navigate the rocks. Clever. But aren't you worried I'm going to spread your big secret? You won't. Give this message to Toussaint, if he's still alive. Is it true? Are you sailing to St. George's to find Santorio? Word sure travels fast around here. Not as fast as I need someone to make it to St. George's. What exactly do you need? There is a man there, a mercenary named Luke Morel. There were um, some arrangements between us. Very loose, you see. Hired guns and the like. <laughs> You understand, don't you? Anyway, I cannot meet them. Something came up. And if I live now, it wouldn't be very good for anyone. I just need Luke to get this message. Mention my name and he'll pay you what he owes me. I can take care of that. Magnifico. Ah, finally someone who can think for himself. Thank you, amigo.
Luke Morell. I'm Christopher Raven. What do you want? A job? Looks like you could do some damage with that hook of yours. If you know how to use it, of course. It cuts through French gas bags like a hot knife through butter. Mon Dieu! One has to be careful with you, eh? Diego Alfaro sends you a message. Huh. Working for Santorio. Are you? Does Santorio usually have pirates working for him? Right. Diego. I was expecting to see his ugly Spaniard face yesterday. That's the message. He's not coming. He let me down again, Secretary Espanol. He said you two had a lethal arrangement. Ah, I see. He sent you. Well, at least he arranged a replacement this time. You've got it wrong. He said you would pay me what you owe him. You believe that? You're a gullible one. No offense, of course. The hell with your monies anyways. I was doing a favor for Diego, and now the favor is done. Wait a moment. I mean no insult, my friend. That damn Diego makes me see fire. Why not wait for a moment and listen to my offer? Make it quick. I need someone to pay a visit to three men who have become problems for me. The pay for this task would be quite high. How high are we talking? You know the going rate per head around here? Twice that. I'll do it. For three times the rate. But, mon ami, the total would be nine times what I pay any cutthroat around here. Then hire one. My rate is four times that. But you just say three. Then three it is. You are a shrewd negotiator. All right, we have a deal. Not yet. I need to see the governor, but I don't have the right papers. You have a way to arrange that? You want to see the governor? Who am I visiting? I have their names, but I must warn you. There are not weak men. You will earn your money. Wait. These aren't your own men, are they? I'm not paying you to ask questions. I've been sailing these seas for many a year.
He is an asshole, Mr. Mighty Mercenary. My aunt. I remember his father. He was a good man. Old man who was. Whatever. Michel sure is an ass. Danger's one, though. Those mercenary friends of his. At least uh, they are gone. Wonder where they've gone off to, though. Driftwood Beach. How do you know that? The fellows say so. I hear things. Yeah, well, the only sounds I like to hear when I'm here is drinking being poured. I'm into that. Let's have one. Now you're talking. Hey, what the hell are you sniffing around for, cochon? I'm not sniffing around for anything, because I've just found it. What the hell are you talking about? Do I know you? Doubt it. I have a name you might recognize, though. Luke Morale sends his regards. Backstabbing pig. Diable. I just help with the body. It was all Pierre's idea. Talk. I just know Morel hired us to kill Toussaint. That's all I know. The bastard, he wants us dead now. I didn't even touch Toussaint. Pierre took him in here and Michel cut his throat. Morel hired you to do this? Yes, yes, but that's all I know. He always deals with Pierre. Pierre Martel? That's right. He, wait, Toussaint, he, he had a letter. It is still on him. We were supposed to throw him in the sea, but it is still here. Take it. I swear, I didn't kill him. Didn't even touch him. Where is Martel? I, I don't know. No way, please. The Place de la Vérité, he, he there. He's maybe, uh, try there, he's... Please, don't kill me.
Yeah? Pierre Martel. I was told he'd be somewhere near the gallows. Oh, I see. My friend, someone has played quite a joke on you. I mean, yeah. You could say near the gallows, all right. He's hanging right from it. That's Martel? When did this happen? Not too long ago. The law caught up with him. You disappointed? I mean, was he your buddy or...? No. Makes no difference to me, so long as he's dead. So, I guess you weren't looking to deliver him a gift or nothing, then? Far from it. Good, good. Done it myself, you know, killing him. I mean, I'm the town executioner. I wouldn't leave now, even if I had a ship to sell me out here. But you don't. Not the point. The point is, those damn buccaneers are circling the islands. Haven't you heard? Can't say I have. Well, now I have. Right. Well, if I was a captain, I would stay as docked until the bastard goes somewhere else. Or until the governor runs them off. Ah, no good at happen unless they threaten his wine cellar. <laughs> Have you visited my three friends yet? Let me remind you that this task requires some urgency. Don't worry, it's done. All three already? You have taken care of them all?
Santorio, your last shipment of food was poisoned. The French are on their way to attack you and your men right now. Well, that explains why half of my men are sick. I don't eat anything I haven't personally inspected and prepared myself. When will the fools learn? Of course you don't, you paranoid bastard. How many of your men can still fight? Not enough. French bastards! Here they come. Great. Well, I need you alive. Where can you use my blade? Almost all of my gunners are sick. You do the most damage manning the gunners. Son of a bitches! 
Move, you stupid bitch! I don't know! Be brave, Oscar! Loud, faster, you fool! Loud, faster, you fool! They're finished. Pity I couldn't have been on my ship out there. The French always carry too much gold on board. Don't remind me of what you are. Hmm, don't worry. I won't mention that the famous pirate hunter Santorio needed help from a lowly pirate to save his own men. If you tell me what I need to know about Neville... I always keep my word, Captain Raven. Even to a pirate. There's a man holed up in the brigands' den, east of Guadeloupe. He's been bragging that once he sailed with Neville, guy goes by the name of Weedy. The pirate hideout? Why haven't you tracked this man down? Isn't hunting pirates your business? I go after who I want, when I want, Raven. Besides, I don't blend in very well there. But I think that you would fit right in, wouldn't you? You're not going to give me much, Santorio. I pulled your ass out of some real trouble back there. I'm sure you'll never let me forget it. Besides, I never said it would be much, just what I had. If you survive, feel free to report back to me. Maybe I'll have some new information by then.
Captain! Captain! Stop yelling. What's the matter? I've bought supplies for the voyage, as you've ordered, Captain. We can set sail any time, but you'll need to pay the shopkeeper for provisions. You bought the supplies? Where is Bodell? He's the quartermaster. He was too drunk to go, Captain. I had to go and do it. Here's the paper from the merchant. Son of a bitch! This is twice the price it should be, you bloody dimwit! I don't know. The thing is, Captain, I... I can't read. You can't read or write? You signed the promise to pay no just fine. Cause I'm proud of my Irish name, Verta O'Sullivan. So I've learned how to write it. You idiot. Didn't you ask about the prices? I... Hmm. You screwed up. You know how much you just cost me. Where's that drunken slob, Bodell? I'm going to hang him from the masthead. Yep, he's probably still drinking over at the Block Bitch Tavern, Captain. 
That miserable excuse for a goddamn sailor. Out of my way. A woman can't even walk along these days. I've been sailing these seas for many a year, spending me days dread and terror and fear. But now I'm returning with gold. May they drop all that tiny thing of yours. Are you going full? Captain! Who are you? I, um, do you want some rum? You've got two seconds to tell me why you're in here and not out doing your job. Huh? What, what do you mean, sir? Supplies. The supplies, damn it. Why is a goddamn halfwit out there getting overcharged for my supplies when you should be doing it yourself? Oh, well. See, Captain, I met a fine lady out there on the street, the best I'd ever seen, and she was asking so little that I thought I'd just come in real quick, just get your poison out if you catch my meaning. She'd better be good-looking. The amount of shit she's getting you in. But I know what a fine woman can do to a man. Oh, thanks for understanding, Captain. Not another word. Where did you send O'Sullivan for those supplies? Porkinghorn shop. You know, the big building near the market. He should be standing right outside. Sober up, Bodell. Are you Polkinghorn? Hello, sir. Yes, I'm Edmund Poking. Oh! You stupid shit. You try and swindle my men? You try and swindle me? Oh, I'm afraid I don't know what you mean, sir. Does this bill of sale ring a bell? It says I owe twice the regular price for my supplies. Ah, now, sir, this bill of exchange is completely legal, so I'd appreciate it if you'd not hit me again. My man here may take offense. <laughs> legal. Uh, I'm sure as hell not paying this much. Be reasonable. Well, I'd hate to have an unsatisfied customer. Let's just call it 500 reals and be done with it. Are you crazy? I'd rather shoot you in the belly than pay that much. Your threats of violence have worn out my patience, sir. Perhaps after a beating, you will be more agreeable. Boys? I should be more careful, Please I'm don't. sorry. Ah, what? Now, now put that away. Stop, please. Here, I'll, I'll rip up the bill of sale. And? And? All right, all right. Go ahead and take some supplies free of charge. Just take them and go. I appreciate you helping me sort out this misunderstanding. 
I knew we wouldn't have to resort to violence. Rich. Why do you say it? Shall we trade?
Where's that drunken slob? Yep. He's probably still. That's what. Christ, blood and bones. This old body tired. Shall we trade? Better pick up the pace. Oh, no, 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 no,
Idiots! Move, you stupid cunts! Move, you stupid bitches! No, blustery boots! Move, you blockheads! Come on! No, blustery boots! Rise, my ass! No, blustery vanishes! Be brave, pile of shit! As you wish it to be off! Lower your brakes! Don't move, this shit! Captain! Captain! Stop yelling. What's the matter? I've bought supplies for the voyage as you've ordered, Captain. We can set sail any time, but you'll need to pay the shopkeeper for provisions. You bought the supplies? Where is Bodell? He's the quartermaster. He was too drunk to go, Captain. I had to go and do it. Here's the paper from the merchant.
son of a bitch. This is twice the price it should be, you bloody dimwit. I don't know. The thing is, Captain, I... I can't read. You can't read or write? You signed the promise to pay no just fine. Cause I'm proud of my Irish name, Verta O'Sullivan. So I've learned how to write it. You idiot. Didn't you ask about the prices? I... Hmm. You screwed up. You know how much you just cost me. Where's that drunken slob, Bodell? I'm going to hang him from the masthead. Yep, he's probably still drinking over at the Block Bitch Tavern, Captain. That miserable excuse for a goddamn sailor. Out of my way. A woman can't even walk along these days. I've been sailing these seas for many a year, spending me days red in terror and fear. But now I'm returning with gold. May they drop all that tiny thing of yours. Are you going for? Captain! Who are you? I, um, do you want some rum? You've got two seconds to tell me why you're in here and not outdoing your job. Huh? What, what do you mean, sir? Supplies. The supplies, damn it. Why is a goddamn halfwit out there getting overcharged for my supplies when you should be doing it yourself? Oh, well. See, Captain, I met a fine lady out there on the street, the best I'd ever seen, and she was asking so little that I thought I'd just come in real quick, just get your poison out if you catch my meaning. She better be good looking. The amount of shit she's getting you in. But I know what a fine woman can do to a man. Oh, thanks for understanding, Captain. Not another word. Where did you send O'Sullivan for those supplies? Porkinghorn's shop. You know, the big building near the market. He should be standing right outside. Sober up, Bodell. Are you Polkinghorn? Hello, sir. Yes, I'm Edmund Poking. Oh! You stupid shit. You try and swindle my men? You try and swindle me? Oh, I'm afraid I don't know what you mean, sir. Does this bill of sale ring a bell? It says I owe twice the regular price for my supplies. Ah, now, sir, this bill of exchange is completely legal, so I'd appreciate it if you'd not hit me again. My man here may take offense. <laughs> legal. Uh, I'm sure as hell not paying this much. Be reasonable. Well, I'd hate to have an unsatisfied customer. Let's just call it 500 reals and be done with it. Are you crazy? 
I'd rather shoot you in the belly than pay that much. Your threats of violence have worn out my patience, sir. Perhaps after a beating, you will be more agreeable. Boys? I should be more careful, Please I'm don't. sorry. Stop, please. Here, I'll, I'll rip up the bill of sale. And? And? All right, all right. Go ahead and take some supplies free of charge. Just take them and go. I appreciate you helping me sort out this misunderstanding. I knew we wouldn't have to resort to violence. Rich. Why do you say that? Shall we trade?
Where's that drunken slob? Yep. He's probably still. That's what. Christ's blood and bones, this old body tired. Shall we trade? Better pick up the pace. Be brave, dipshits. 
plastered him to shit. And make no mistake, he ain't no swabby. Never seen that shit in my life, though. Don't mean nothing. Could have been. Hang on, look. They're one of them? Let's find out. Oi, you with the crew I just docked. They're with me. It's my ship. So, you're the one who spent those Spaniards to Davy James's locker? You got a problem with that? No, 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 my friend. The truth is, me and Harry here, we were just talking about you. I mean, uh, you, you took them bastards down. I ain't seen nothing like that for a while. You fight like a damn demon. We was gonna tell the boys, you know, warn them that the Spaniards were coming. But you just went and sunk the bastards before we could get a ward out. You at the Brotherhood? No, I'm my own captain. Oh, uh, you know, that don't really matter much with what you done. That'll buy you a hell of a good reputation around here, I tell you. Should come in handy. Do you know anyone by the name of Weedy? I was told he'd be here. Can't say I do. You could ask at the tavern. Most everyone hangs around there. Shit, here comes Biff. What? Nothing to it. Uh, we'll put in a good word for you. What the shit is going on here? Who's this run? Why aren't you two ladies stopping his ass into the ground? I don't give a shit if he shoved a horn up King Philip's ass. Nobody gets through without me knowing. Can't even let you two bomb stand guard for ten minutes without you screwing up. Get the hell out of here! Well met, sir. You need me. I don't know you. What do you want from me? Don't get an attitude with me, Ash. It's not healthy. Blackthorn sent me. I've got something for you. It's waiting near my ship. Finally, I'd almost given it up for lost. It almost was. Some dead man sent a small fleet of Spanish galleons after me. When I find out who it was, there's going to be a lot of blood in the water. Good luck, Ash. The same to you. Hey, why don't you come over here and give this a suck? <laughs> Asshole. Don't you ever mess with Weedy, you little slut. Never mess with me. I'll fucking kill you. Uh. 
Things sure have changed, huh? These days, even the whores have no respect. I remember back in the days before the storm swept half of Port Royal off the map. Men like us, we had it all. Men like us? What are you going on about? You look too young to have air on your balls. The fuck would you know about Port Royal before the quake? I know there used to be hard crews there. Crews that wouldn't take shit from some beaten down old hooker. Well now, who the hell are you trying to impress? One of these crews of dandies prowling around here? You trying to prove you're some kind of hard case? I'm only looking to impress one man, and hopefully join his crew. I heard that you might be able to help me find him. But I guess I was mistaken. You're obviously not the man I heard you were. Wait a second. What, Captain? Neville. And the Devil's Tines. Haven't you heard they're back? Neville? He, he's back? I mean, of course he's back. So what? You think he's just gonna take in some punk like you? Make you one of the Tines? Ha! So you do know how I can find him? Of course. Us Tynes stick together until the end. So I was right. You used to be one of the Tynes. Used to be? You're never out of the Tynes, you goddamn little milksop. <laughs> you think you've got what it takes? You ever killed a man? You ever got a wench like a sheep? Hey! Ever hold a youngling in front of his dear mummy and open his throat? Seemed like ages ago when you and your mates left me to bleed out. Huh? You? What is this? Who are you? I'm just remembering some old times of my own, Weedy. These days I go by Raven. But my family name is Callahan. You remember us? Family of four? I suppose it doesn't matter. We Callahans are a tenacious bunch. And you boys really should have stopped with my hands. You. No, you got it wrong. That wasn't me. Neville's the one you want. Him and his man Kensington. I can tell you where. You have no idea where they are. They left you behind after the quake, didn't they? Even a dog like Neville can recognize a useless fool when he sees one. Wait, 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 wait. Look, look, look. I can tell you where Br Brady is. Bloodfish Brady. I was never really one of the times, you know. Neville left me here to rot. But Brady, he's a savage bastard. He can help you find Neville. I know him. So where is he? In San Muerte. He caught ill, so uh, Neville dropped him in a monastery with all his fucking priests. They took care of him. Look, go after Brady, eh? Hey? Leave me be. I'm not even sure what, not even remember the times anymore. Just look, like you said, it was... What if I thought they killed your family? You understand, eh? I understand just fine, Weedy.
you! Who the hell are you anyway? Name's Raven. Captain Christopher Raven. Shut up, scum! I'll tell you when to talk. Give me one damn reason why I shouldn't toss your ass back into the sea! Now, talk! How about this? Step aside, and maybe you'll live to see tomorrow. Did you just threaten me? Are you fat and deaf? Okay, you mouthy little shit. Now you've really got some problems.
Any survivors? Keep looking. <laughs> sure I am. I'm looking for a man named Brady. Do you know him? Was he here? Kill him. Right. 
right. I'm the only help you're going to get. Captain, we heard noises, sir. Whoa. Where'd you find this one? A tribe of savages raided the place. She survived and they dragged the other three into the jungle. Donovan, I need you to track them. One of the men they took is the one I'm after. He might still be alive. They took two of the monks as well. We have to help them. Don't do anything until I find you. Watch the nun. Make sure she doesn't get herself killed. I'll need to talk to her when I'm done here. Aye, aye, sir. Give her some water and keep her quiet. Uh, begging your pardon, sir, but a woman on board. Ain't nothing good about it. It's bad luck, they say. I'll remember you said that when it's time to divvy up the reward for a safe return. Safe return, then. Hands off of her. Christopher Raven. You're welcome to try your luck with the savages if you don't like our company. What's the situation? Agreed. Lead the way. Okay, let's meet at the far end of the swamps.
I know. You all right? And? How many cannibals are there? So what? It's just a pack of savages. Let's rush them. I'll lead. Follow me and prepare for a fight. There's no time, Donovan. Let's go.
Fucking monks! Got our carnivores! At least I can have some peace and quiet first! Shit. You're a sight for sore eyes, stranger. Why don't you cut these wood up <laughs> so I can properly in? <sighs> Not really the most friendly <sighs> way to. Shut up, or I'll give you a fresh one. And that goes for you, too! <gasps> this is your one chance, understand? The truth gets you out of here, a lie gets you gut shot and eaten. Ask away. I ain't going nowhere. Where is ah, Neville? Fuck off. Captain. I know you got business, but we're all going to end up in a stew pot if we don't shut these monks up. What shall we do? Cut them loose. That should shut them up. You know, I heard these savages are fond of eating their victims alive. Makes for a more entertaining meal. Listen, Brady. You help me, you have a chance. You fuck with me and your cannibal food. So let's try this again. Where is Neville's camp? Where is his hideout? I can't remember, mate. It was a long time ago. Uh, not for me, it isn't. Well, I'll be fucked. You're gonna try to kill him, aren't you? Where is he? All right, all right. I, I don't know about no, but back then, he would usually... Oh, uh, no, Brady. Brady! Fuck! Yeah! <laughs> 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 
You must rest. The arrow that hit you was coated in poison. That agrees me. I'm fine. Your face. What? What are you talking about? Uh, never mind. For a moment there, you looked strange. No. The poison. It's in your blood. It's spreading. How do you know? I've treated many poor souls at the monastery. I've seen this poison before. It's particularly... Were you brazenous as well? I helped wherever I was needed. You have to rest. The poison will work much faster if you're agitated. The good news is the venom you are infected with was extracted from a poisonous fish that the ground with your spine. You'd have been dead almost immediately if it had been. Good news for you too, Missy. If the captain ends up as fish food, you're going to end up being... <sighs> Fucking cannibals. Now what am I supposed to do with you? Do with me? I... I... I can help you. You need a cure for the poison. I know where you must go to retrieve it. When I encountered this poison before, the abbot sent a monk to the Karak tribe on Songre de Dragon. I know where it is. What about it? The shaman there crafted a cure. The Karak are not like those savages back there. They're more... civilized. In their own way. They... they have an extensive knowledge of herbs and medicine. Use the stuff on the other guy. You sure it worked? I have nothing to gain by harming you. Trust me. I want you alive as much as you do. Set course for Sangre de Drago. And hoist the sail as high, damn it. I'm in a hurry. Aye, aye, Captain. Follow. No, they mustn't come with us. The Karaks know my order, but if they see a group of armed men, you hardly look like an expedition of peace. All right. Donovan, come with me. The rest of the men can guard the ship. And if you don't get this doctor to give me what I need, he'll be staying here permanently. Try anything stupid, and I'll kill you myself. You're an extremely unpleasant man. Why do you think the worst of everyone? Because I'm realistic. The order of the white man's god needs our help again. It must be truly bad if they have sent a woman to plead with us. Sir, we humbly... Not another word. This man is not one of yours. I see only darkness in your soul. There is no cure for you. But it's the same place... You don't see much. But I only need a cure for my body. I know what will cure my soul. You bear no gift and come instead with a black violence in your heart. I have no cures for a man such as you. You flailed desperately to escape your pool of blackness. 
But do not realize that your struggles only draw you further down, like the traps under the jungle. I can help you, both of you, but you first must prove yourself. Come, you have many visions in your head, but I shall show you a different one. It's a dream for some, and a nightmare for others. If you survive, you will have your cure. But he can barely stand. Ah, I'll do whatever it takes. Keep an eye on her till I return. Sir, if you ask me, we should go get the man and beat it out these animals. I'm not asking you, Mr. Donovan. You have your orders. Chris, you're finally here. Lonin. Come with me, brother. You've got to see this. to keep the marble close. There are some here who would like to see you lose it. What? What do you mean? Hey, don't run away. What? What do you mean? Don't give a wet shit about your excuses, Maria. Find me a new girl. Now! Another one? But I've already given you three of my girls. Where are they? If you were smart, you'd stop asking questions, get me a new girl. I can't be expected to keep track of your little whores. Well, look who's here. Pay him no mind. He's just a guest. He won't be staying long. I don't like the look of him. At all. Really, he's fine. Pay him no mind. Why are you protecting him? If I decide to gut him, that's my business. Come on now, let him pass. It's not worth all the trouble. No! <laughs> Chris. You have to be careful. It's your fault I'm here. You know that. But... No but, Chris. Just don't lose yourself. I've been waiting f for so long. What? You remember me, Chris? 
They killed us. They killed us all. Whose fault is it? Whose fault? Peterson. My father's dead. You're not real! Avenge me. Avenge your family. Well, bugger me with a fishbone. It's the devil himself. <laughs> <laughs> should be dead. Dead and buried. Dead? I suppose I don't look all that good. But don't you love me anymore, Captain? It's me, old Weedy. I'll kill you all if I have to. I'm not gonna die by your hand, Neville. You know the feeling? When you love somebody and you realize you've been lied to, you know. I feel nothing but anger and hatred. Anger just covers over your love, brother. You'll see. Chris, I knew we'll meet in the end. What are you doing here, Marcus? Follow me. There's something you need to see. Go ahead. It's not far.
We're almost there. Just head upstairs. There's a terrible evil in your soul, but your spirit is strong and resilient. Few have survived this trial, but now you must go forward. To a sacred place, you have shown your strength in the trial. Now you have a new challenge. The old gods demand it. Know that what you encounter can destroy you. Tread carefully.
and will. You are the first man in years to have entered the temple and come out alive, and the first white man to have ever done so. It's not the kind of place I'd like to enter again, but it helped. Yes, and now you will be on your way. Are you throwing me out? No, I am saying that I know you will be on your way now. I also know you will be back. Someday. Don't count on that. I've had more than enough of these islands. For now. Goodbye, Arco. Until the next time, Raven Man.
I knew the priest would heal you. The Karak have helped us in the past. Their methods may not be Christian, but it always works wonders when there are no other options. What sickness was Brady laid up with? Oh, it began with uh, the kind of illness one catches from uh, dubious company. <clears throat> Female company. But that wasn't all. The abbot couldn't have known at the time, but it weakened him so much that a strange blood fever came over him next. I hope that means he pissed hot blood until his prick fell off. <clears throat> Did you find him when you were exploring the island? Or meet up with the brothers? I found him. What's left of him is still there. Uh, oh. It was the cannibals doing, sister. Ah. <laughs> then it was the Lord's doing that he had managed to confess his sins just in time. Our abbot heard his confession just weeks ago. Would you believe the man cursed and swore, even during the sacrament, the, the words I heard? Heard, huh? Guess even a nun can't help eavesdropping. I was cleaning his dirty bandages behind the curtain. I could hardly help overhearing his words. If that is eavesdropping, then may the Lord forgive me. Excuse me, Captain, but I think you're hardly the kind of person to question someone's morals. Sister, I don't care if you were eavesdropping on patients or betting the abbot. I only want to know what the bastard said. I don't know. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. He even swore he would take revenge on a man named Kensington. I've heard this was the man who brought Brady to our monastery years ago, before my time. Go on. He said he would soon be cured, and then he would set off for a... a Reba, or... was it Arroyo? Wherever this Mr. Kensington was living, or so Brady thought. And then he said he would... he... Yes? I... couldn't repeat what he said. It was so vile! But he was babbling, anyway. It was clearly a fever delusion. The abbot himself said there was no place by that name. Arroyo? No. Arriba? Aria? Was it Aria? Yes! That was it! Do you know it? I do. It's no fever dream. We're setting sail for St. John's. St. John's? Ah, uh, I don't understand. Aria was a slave's name for a place on that island. An old colony. Guess growing up constantly hearing the maroon tongue has its uses after all. What about me? Some of my order are in Bridgetown. Can you take me to them? It's on the way. I'll drop you off. something to wear only men's clothes but, <laughs> but I, I think they'll do <laughs> so how long have you been a nun why do you ask we need to talk now that you've recovered i assume you'll continue to pursue your objective whatever that may be now that i'm able to stand on my own again yes thanks to you Oh, <laughs> you're welcome. It is my duty to help and serve where I can. You know, I was wondering, 
That raven of yours. First on the island, then the way the crack priest reacted to it. It was very strange. It was almost That raven has been with me a long time. It's just a bird, nothing more. I do not want to hear any of your religious nonsense. You understand? No, I was... I, I only meant that it seemed odd. I was only going to say that... Now that you are well, I should be going. I, I just don't want to be in the way. I think it would be best if you took me somewhere where I can seek help from my order. I don't want to ask too much of you, but surely you can do that much for me. Mm, uh, I'd be an ingrate if I didn't at least give my savior safe passage now, wouldn't I? However... I would like a proper goodbye. I'm sure you can do that much. Sir, a storm is approaching. Uh, oh, storm captain. It looks like a fire. Make sure the men are up and ready. And get to your stations. Aye, sir. Chris, what's happening? Mm, don't worry. Our cargo is safe. But, Stay here. But Chris, uh, Chris, wait. Oh. This is it. We go our separate ways. I suppose a blackbird is much more suitable company for the likes of you. I suppose I should be grateful then that a man like you didn't throw me overboard after the order refused to pay your ransom. I guess the abbot just took you for the untrustworthy pirate that you are. for your concern. Come on. Anything you need! Push off.
Где синий Damn it, are you ugly and black? Anything you need? <laughs> I've been sailing these seas for many a year. Hey there, Tommy. You fancy yourself a fight? Toss a few coins in. Then try your luck in the ring. I'm ready for a fight. Try not to kill anyone, or hell, go ahead and try. Doesn't matter to me. Long as you've got the coin to cover your fight. men you've got here not by a long shot but you're gonna have to get back in the ring if you want to find out for yourself what do you say I'm ready for the next round try not to get killed Whoa! 
You made short work of him, that's for sure. You ready to take on the reigning champ? His name's Razor Jack. He's a real nasty piece of work. Let's do it. Let's? You're the one getting stabbed, pal. I just collect the money afterwards. <laughs> that was the champion. I've had better fights against drunk whores. He usually fights better than that. Here's the purse. You earned it. Now I'm returning what gold and great store. It's time to retire and grab me a whore and it's no name never. Guess you need This is private property, no entry. I'm here to see your master. Master? You calling me a slave? I don't care who you are. I want to see your boss now. You better mind your tongue and keep on moving. Just go and tell your master that. You got shit in your ears? Move it or things get rough. Stop, please. Relax. I mean your employer. I have a message for him. You got an appointment? No, but I have something very important to tell him. No appointment, no entry. Go away. So, which one are you? Neither. You look like a pirate. Stink like one too. So, what's your business today, scum? Stealing or killing? I told your man I have a message for the owner of this place. It's important. Not what I had in mind for Give it to me! It's not in writing. I'm here to deliver it in person. And you lie like one too. Listen, I came all the way here as a favor for my friend Brady. He told me I'd find Mr. Kensington Hill. Just tell him it's from. Someone sent you with a message for Mr. Kensington. That's right, a man named Brady. Mr. Kensington is an old friend of his. Follow me, and don't try anything stupid.
Excuse me, sir. Hmm. This one here, he said. Come over, John. I don't know my own. I don't know what I have. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Hmm. Another thing. Where's your words? And then run again. And you come over, that's right. You go on? Yeah, here we go. Ah, I see. Why, yes, Ray, do bring him in. I understand there is a certain message to be delivered. Yes, from Brady. Old blood fist Brady. Brady, you say? Do go on. Mm, this is a very personal message, Mr. Kensington. He insisted on it remaining that way. But what is the use of secrecy when God knows what's in everyone's hearts? Wouldn't you agree, Mr... Rache. An unusual name, Mr. Rache. Are you of Dutch persuasion? No, I'm here to discuss Brady. Ah, yes. You did tell Ray that you too were Brady's friend, did you not? He and I first met... many years ago. Old friendships, is there anything more wonderful? Pity the three of us have not had the opportunity to spend more time together. The conversation would be titillating, I'm sure of it. So, Mr. Raffi, how is my dear friend Brady? He's fine. And do tell, has he told you much of me? I bet he joked a bit at my expense, did he not? <laughs> yes, probably said I was a fat little toad who spent his days in drunken frivolity. No, not at all. He spoke highly of you. Told me all about how well off you were and where I could find you. And you have found me, haven't you? Bless Brady's bottomless memory. Mr. Kensington, with all due respect, I'd like to pass this message on and get back to my business. I'm doing this as a favor for Brady. But why in such a hurry, Mr. Rather? I was just about to have my glass of wine. Won't you join me? Mm, no, thank you. And I have to say this again, Mr. Kensington. Brady insisted that his message be for your ears only. But you see, Ray here is my ear amongst a great many other things. Our mutual friend said it was for you alone. Yes, our dear friend Brady. Mr. Raka, you've put me in an uncomfortable position. I assure you, the message is worth it. Oh, I'm not talking about that. No, 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 you see, I try to live without sin. I live my life as God wants me to live it. And yet, today, I have sinned. What do you mean? I have lied. But then so have you. Oh, you're a decent enough liar, Rakha. But I have learned to recognize lies quite well. I'm not sure I understand. I have counted a total of two truths in your words. You are not Dutch. And you really have met Brady. But he's not your friend, nor has he told you much about me. Mr. Kensington, if you'll just listen. And therein lies the crux of the matter. You see, I'm not Kensington. I... what? You forced me to lie, Mr. Raka. Incidentally, you never reacted when I misspoke your name. Twice. Maybe I just don't give a shit when a fat toad says my name wrong. Uh, what kind of game are you playing? Uh, 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 why, I was just about to propose a little game. Why don't we start by giving ourselves new names? Real ones this time. For is it not said that lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight? I am Edward Avery, the owner of this modest estate, and, with God's help, a little bit more. 
Raven. Captain Christopher Raven. No point in hiding such a fine name, Mr. Raven. Now you came here to see Kensington, or shall I say, for Kensington? Wherever he is, he can't hide from me. And that, Mr. Raven, is the only reason why you're still alive. <laughs> Forgive my candor, I'm an honest man. That is also why I can spot deception. I knew you were no well-wisher when you thought I was Kensington. I believe your intentions were somewhat uh, more grim than merely passing a message. I intend to kill him. <laughs> you see that I can be an honest man as well. Was there a point to this little farce of yours? So that I might know, of course. And now I do. Mr. Raven, each and every day I pray to the Lord. Long ago I prayed for a little prosperity and God gave me the opportunity to obtain this property. The Lord provided, and yet my brush with good fortune left Mr. Kensington quite displeased. Yet still, God has been gracious to me. But for Mr. Kensington, I believe the Lord would have rewarded my prayers even more handsomely. This island is like a beautiful woman, Mr. Raven, and I have taken great care of her dear face. Yet she deserves more. And for years, Mr. Kensington has been an unsightly boil on her cheek. So what are you telling me? You're out for Kensington's blood? I could never wish any man ill, not even if his earthly departure would benefit us all. And besides, even if there was such a man who wished for Mr. Kensington to leave this world for good, that man's status would be irreparably damaged and for his actions would undoubtedly be swiftly punished. He would be rid of Kensington, but at what cost? And you're telling me this because? Let's say there was another man who wished for Mr. Kensington to disappear. A wilder man, one with no great reputation to lose. Determined to secure his wish, but without the necessary means to do so. He perhaps lacks the knowledge, the preparation, the resources, everything with which the first man could easily provide him, while staying far behind in the shadows. Is there an offer somewhere in all this talk? You want to pay me to go after Kensington, is that it? Have you noticed that there is sin in Kensington's very name? What's that got to do with anything? It's no coincidence, Mr. Raven. The man wallows in sin like a pig in filth. He has no fear of God to speak of. He might as well be a savage crawling around on all fours, howling to some squid-headed beast in the jungle. Says the man trying to have him killed, but whatever helps you sleep, he's a sinner, so he deserves to die. It's good enough for me. Oh, Mr. Raven, that is not what he deserves. No, Kensington deserves to lose everything he has, piece by piece. He deserves to lose everything, have it all taken. And then when his screams grow tiresome, then and only then will he die. So you and Kensington have a history. <laughs> Great. I still don't have time to sit here while you play mastermind. I want this finished quickly. There are several steps in the plan that cannot take place until certain arrangements have been made, Mr. Raven. At this time, Kensington's influence reaches far and wide, and his friends are numerous. It's going to take some time before your boot is on his throat. Look, I can spare a couple days here. If you can't get me close to Kensington by then, I'll find a faster way. There is no faster way, Mr. Raven. Then I'll make one. I won't spend more time than I have to on these bloody islands. If you can pull off your little plan quickly, fine. If not, I'll do it myself. Your impatience prevents you from understanding that the quickest way is not always the best, Mr. Raven. But that comes along with your way of life, I suppose. 
All right, you'll get Kensington as quickly as possible, but know that it won't be as clean as I'd intended it to be, and the steps you'll have to take certainly won't be easy. Fine, as long as they're fast. I would ask you how you feel about sinking ships, Christopher, but, but with your profession, I think I can guess. I try to get off them before they sink. Ah, a fine plan. But I'm talking about some very specific ships. Thanks to your recent actions, I was able to obtain a most useful list, the details of most of Kensington's routes. An expensive purchase, but it should be worth it. So it's Kensington's transport fleet that needs to go down? No, no, not a fleet. Oh, he has one, certainly, but it is pointless to try to win a game of chess by taking out all the pawns. Instead, the player concentrates on the most valuable pieces, one by one. I've never been much for games. Just tell me who to sink first. Kensington has a very important transport ship coming in from Africa. It would cause him quite the financial setback if he were to, uh, how do you people say it? Send it to St. Jones? Davy Jones' locker. Oh yes, that's it. And this is the map of the intended route. Would you? It'd be my pleasure. Perfect. Here's the map and the details. Of course, the place where you'll intercept them is up to you. As long as the ship disappears without a trace, of course. Anything you need?
Make it quick. I think we can spare the time. Shall we trade?
What? Not really. And... I could use another man. Let's see how good your Viking skills are on the open ocean. What the hell is this? A trap, you uncivilized fool. 
My name is not Archer. It's Antoine Artig, protégé de Robert Surcote. The man you frame in for crimes he didn't commit Port Royal. So? What the hell are we doing out here? Mon Dieu, you smug bastard! We're out here because we couldn't risk engaging a savage like you around innocent bystanders. Each of these men trained under Sir Code. A life in shackles is not enough to make up for your crimes. We are here to make sure you made the devil, not a jailer. I could have killed you all just as easily back in St. George's. Come on then. You've already wasted enough of my time. Adim, men! <laughs> your eyes.
I hear that Scots in board the man of war. I don't believe it. It's badly damaged, but he's still trying to get rid of it. And besides that, there should be some cargo he salvaged. Oh, chest full of gold! I saw Scotson in a tavern drinking away his cut. 
Boyer. Boy matey. Anything you need. Accept God's grace. Who among you will repent your vile deeds and accept God's everlasting mercy? You, sir, won't you repent? You don't get out of my way. I'm going to have some new things to repent for. Once a sinner, always a sinner. The communion and God's mercy are free, good sir, but only if you choose to receive them. You're giving communion in the streets? Why don't you have your own church? I go wherever God's mercy is needed. Won't you lay down the burden of your sins? Communion doesn't take long, and your soul is surely worth a few moments of your time. I'll pass, preacher. Where I'm going, I just have to come right back anyways. Go in peace. I'll be here. All of God's children deserve his divine blessings. Have you cha- No th Go in peace.
You, sir. Oh. Guess you need your more or less. Not to work.
Be brave, she passes. My right is to be strong. Be brave, asshole. Lower your brains. No, foster the dogs. No, foster the idiots. No, foster your dumb. All your stupid bitches. No, foster your fools. Sing this fool. Find? I thought you said she was homesick. Sure, you. You go ahead. Meet back at the ship when you're done.
should have left the gun open right there. Wonder if anyone's needing a deck hand. All right, Hugh. What the fuck is going on here? Cut the shit. What are you doing? This ain't a hospital, and sure as hell isn't your house.
I thought she was married to you. I don't like being lied to, Hugh. Especially by my own damn crew. She's getting married today? Right now? Shit. You mean I've come this far? Damn it, Hugh. All right, five minutes, and I'm coming in with you. What the hell was that? Thought you said you needed to talk to her. I'd never seen anyone talk with a damn flintlock. You're lucky I don't leave you here. That's two weeks dock pay. And you're on shit detail. Get back to the ship. To retire and grab me a whore and it's no nay never. No nay never no more. What will I say with the devil? No never no more. I went to the tavern, my favorite place.
Don't bet on it. Anything you need? try. Guess you need... Show it.
guess you need... Guess you need...
Oh, <laughs> 
house. Let's run this, useless street. Be brave, Briggs. We don't die today, you bitches.
shit. Let's rock this with Yes, you need Shall we trade?
I thought you said she was home sick. Sure, Hugh. You go ahead. Meet back at the ship when you're done.
If anyone's needing a deck hand. Alright, Hugh. What the fuck is going on here? Cut the shit. What are you doing? This ain't a hospital, and sure as hell isn't your house. I thought she was married to you.
I don't like being lied to, Hugh. Especially by my own damn crew. She's getting married today? Right now? Shit. You mean I've come this far? Damn it, Hugh. All right. Five minutes, and I'm coming in with you. What the hell was that? Thought you said you needed to talk to her. I'd never seen anyone talk with a damn flintlock. You're lucky I don't leave you here. That's two weeks dock pay. And you're on shit detail. Get back to the ship. Bienvenue, Cap.
Anything you need? Try. Guess you need... Show it. Guess you need...
Qu'est-ce une... Shit, 
your knockouts. Guess you need...
Guess you need... Show it. Another sheep captain who think is something special. But you know better, eh? Every criminal who fish sheep thinks he is a master of the seas. Mais est-ce que c'est vrai? If you wish to work for me, you have to prove you are worthy of our attention, mon ami. I don't need to prove anything to you. Hello? Why would you be talking with me if not for the chance to win money and glory? under the banner of La France. All right. What do you want me to do? Tout d'abord, we must see that you are truly our ally. Hire at least one French officer as part of your crew. That will certainly be a sign, uh, how you say, goodwill? What do you want from me? Why are you telling me this? Not interested.
You son of a bitch. <laughs> and now, thanks for your help back there. Let me just get your money. You just fucked with the wrong man, Ledoux. I'll take the money off your corpse. Men, get him! Kill the son of a bitch!
give your shit. Don't piss me off. Be brave, chuck suckers. Guess you need... Die today, you bitches! Be brave, shit asses! As you wish. Right, cannons fire! Son of a 
We don't die today, you sluts! Guess you need Guess you need your Anything Ready for the journey? Just about. And how was the hunt? Easy enough. 
No survivors, I assume? No, I need not know that. In fact, I just need to hear that you are ready to continue on. The sooner the better. You will need to become acquainted with yet another man, Christopher. Another accident? Heavens, no. No, this man's position is somewhat high. Too high for him to fall without excessive scrutiny. Sounds like the perfect time for a fall, if you ask me. There will be far too much noise, and his position makes him more useful as an ally than a corpse. A bribe, then? Hmm, no. No, he makes far too much coin to risk his standing by taking a bribe. That much is certain. The man in question is a Monsieur Touché, the governor's personal secretary. He is very comfortable where he is, and he doesn't believe any changes are necessary. And Kensington still got to him. Actually, he did not. And therein lies our opportunity. He can be quite useful in undermining Kensington, if he can be persuaded to do so. It will be up to me to persuade him personally, but I am counting on you to make him more receptive to my invitation. All right, but if he won't take a bribe and you don't want him killed... Yes, but like any man comfortable in his position, he has certain uh, vices. Certain habits that we may exploit. For example, he has been a regular guest at a rather well-known, albeit discreet, establishment in Bridgetown. An establishment which, I'm told, you happen to know as well. Full of... sinners. Young, fallen women. Everyone knows about Maria's. I know the place and the owner. I know you do, Christopher. Hence the plan. I hate to disappoint you, but he won't be the first one caught visiting the girls there. I'll bet his friends already know. Hell, they probably use Maria's girls themselves. Maybe it'll upset his wife, but I don't think it'll make him work with us. But that is the key, Christopher. You see, Mr. Touche's tastes demand a rather particular type of girl. Young, with cropped hair, and with a very... There is no other way to put it. Very flat chest. So? There are more details which I will spare you. Vile, filthy details. But they all add up to one inescapable conclusion. Mr. Touché seems to prefer men to women. Ah... Uh, I see. Yes, indeed. And buggery is, as you know, a capital offence. Due to his standing, Mr. Touché would probably find himself beheaded rather than hanged. But I doubt he would enjoy either. He's managed to find male prostitutes before, but so far he hasn't requested one at your friend's establishment. Yet. So... how do we catch him with one? I put my full trust in you, Christopher. With your mind, and your friendship with the woman who runs that business, I know you can arrange a compromising meeting for Mr. Touché. Then simply give him this letter. It informs him to come and see me so that everything might go away. God will still judge his sins, but the governor will not. I think it can be arranged. I had no doubt. May God's hand guide you, especially in that den of sin into which you would send. I'm pretty sure I can handle that, but it's not going to be free. Ah, yes. I, I don't expect your friend will do this out of the goodness of her heart, will she? Fortunately, I know how to speak her language. I presume this will be enough to convince her. I'll do what I can. What if he refuses? As long as he's caught with, shall we say, a smile on his face, he won't. Would you, in his position? Even if he were to save his own neck, just think of the damage. 
I can imagine the shock on the faces of my good friends in the church. Why, the bishop would have Mr. Touche banished from these islands at the very least, especially if a man such as I were to support such an unfortunate yet necessary measure. First time I've hunted an old pervert. Yes, you.
another no on a cool. Yes, you... Hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Hey, pirate, you like to hunt? <laughs> Not animals. You read my mind. We should talk sometime. Depends on what you're hunting. <laughs> a pack of rats, so to speak. Rat bastard thieves who thought they could get away from me. I've been hunting them down, and now I've got the last of them cornered. What'd they take from you? They robbed a ship the night before it was set to leave port. A beautiful job. Made off with a damned barrel's worth of coins. A ship? Not your ship? It wasn't my ship, it was my robbery! And my crew of thieves! I planned the damn thing, provided equipment, found the mark, and they go and double-cross me! Rob the ship and crawl back into their holes like filthy vermin! <laughs> greedy, greedy rats. They say there's no honor among thieves. The hell with honor! It's a matter of principle. So you need my help fighting them? <laughs> I don't need your bloody help. Sure, I'll toss you a few coins, but I just thought you looked like the type who'd like to get in on the fun. The last of them will be passing this way any minute. I can promise you this. When you bash them, they're gonna spill gold too, along with their blood. What do you say? All right. What's the plan? Plan? They're rats. Just stomp them to death and leave them to be scraped off the cobblestones. How many of them are there? There were six of them to start. Now there's only four. 
damn the rats are hard to kill. I found the whole lot of them twice and only managed to kill one each time before the rest scurried off. And you're sure they have the money on them? Absolutely. I've been hunting them since the robbery. If they'd taken the time to hide the gold, I would have been on top of them in two shakes of a rat's tail. Oh. Here they come! It's the Devil's Hound himself! Shut up! Decided not to sneak up from behind and stab me in the back like you did the others, eh, Burdock? They all died fast. I'm making sure you boys go nice and slow. <laughs> I'd say that takes care of me rock problem. Looks that way. At least until I put my next crew together. Rats are everywhere these days. Are you satisfied with what you took off the bodies? I filled my purse. Thanks for the help. You stay on your guard now. There are rats everywhere these days. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise. We have no business to take care of. Could it be you've come for pleasure? Not for me. But I want to arrange something for a friend. Mm, how generous of you. Send him over. I'll be sure to take care of him. Does he want anything in particular? He's actually one of your regulars. I'll need you to find him something special for the next time he comes in. All right, Chris. What are we playing at? Who are we talking about, and why isn't he the one telling me all this? His name is Touche. He's the governor's secretary. Chris, this ends here. Being discreet is how I keep this business going, and I'm not going to... Come on, Maria. You know what he likes. I need you to give him the real thing. Not a girl made to look like one. And once he's done, I'd like to have a word with him. Are you insane? You think I'm going to let you blackmail a customer? I never even discuss my customers. Especially not one of his standing. And certainly not with you. Goodbye, Christopher. Would this convince you? What's in there, lead? something heavier well it might help no it's impossible my customers know that everything that happens here stays here i can't afford to lose anyone's trust and i especially can't afford to earn the wrath of someone like touche how do you even know him anyway don't worry about that and you're not going to lose anyone's trust, don't worry. Touche's going to end up making a powerful friend. He just doesn't know it yet. All I need is a little leverage to push him in the right direction. We're not talking about you, Chris, are we? All right, who is this friend? Deep pockets and exclusive information. Doesn't sound much like your usual crowd. I can tell you he's influential. He also knows people high up in the church. Haven't the preachers been complaining about you long enough? Are you saying he could make things easier for me? I'm saying his influence is only going to keep growing. I'm giving you a good hand here, Maria. Play it right, and you can forget about small timers like Touche. We're going to turn him into my friend's puppet, and yours too. All right. I'll take the gamble. 
Not just what you've asked for. He's only been getting girls here, made up to look like boys. I don't deal in boys. It's not worth the heat. Even Gus has stopped offering them over the Flamingo. And you know him. He'd bend over himself if you paid him enough. I can arrange the meeting for Touche, but I don't have the dish. I guess I don't need to ask if you know where to find one. By the church? Last place you'd look. Anyway, the sooner we get him over here, the better my girls will be able to doll him up. It takes time to make a man look as pretty as a girl. <laughs> I can think of a quick way. I'm not in the mood to joke, Maria. Who's joking? I'm just letting you know, Christopher. Fine. Get everything ready here. I'm off to the damn church. First time in a while, I'll wager. Don't worry. They're usually outside. Mr. Stevenson. <laughs> Why, thank you, sir. I do try. Speaking of which, are you here to try something new, perhaps? Sir, that man, is he with you? S sir? It's your lucky day, boy. Consider yourself hired. Oh, thank you, sir. But I'm not looking to join with any ship now. I always get so seasick. You know what I'm talking about. And this'll pay better than the old perverts around here will. Sir, the gentleman was merely asking for directions. Yes, and I know where those directions would have led him. I'm hiring you to entertain a rich friend of mine. Sir, what you are talking about is a crime, and, 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 if I were the kind of person who would do what you're describing well, how would I know you aren't trying to set me up? I've never seen you around here before. Not that I am one of those people, mind you. Ever heard of Maria's brothel? You'll be putting on your little performance there. But pardon me, that establishment is ladies only. I mean, for ladies only. And today you'll be entertaining a very special customer there. I... I simply don't understand, sir. You'll get the details at Maria's. All you need to know is that you'll be getting four times as much as you'd be getting for turning tricks in this alleyway. It'll be safer, too. I... I... Well, I... Are you telling the truth, sir? Come on. Hurry up and you won't be sorry. <laughs> Who's asking if you do?
my eyes. Maria. Well, I can tell he's not a customer. All right. Step aside, Christopher. I'll take care of the rest. This calls for a woman's touch. He's a pretty boy, but making him into an attractive girl will require a few tricks. I'd rather not know. Just know I'm earning every coin in that pouch you brought. We'll have him ready soon. Just in time for Touche to show up. Feel free to wait. Just don't interrupt us. <laughs> Welcome, sir. It's an honor to see you again. Yes, yes. <clears throat> I assume everything is ready? It is, sir. In fact, I have a surprise for you that I think you will enjoy very much. A very unique one. Just for you. Oh, what kind of surprise? Something fit for those with certain tastes. Something you will only find here. Discreet as always. And more than worth your time. If you could just take a look, sir. The surprise is waiting in this room. I know you'll just love it. Really now? Well, let's see it then. Just follow me, sir. Welcome, sir. They call me Joan. I'm here for your entertainment. Oh, my, my, my. Uh, madam, this is too much. How did you... I knew you'd enjoy the surprise, sir. I shall leave you alone for now. Yes. Go about your business. How is it? This game knows urchins over. You have truly outdone yourself today, mistress. I'm glad our surprise has met with your approval, sir. Thank you, madame. Thank you ever so much. I shall be returning far more often now. There. You owe me, Chris. So does your friend. Don't worry. You'll get yours. Just make sure this thing happens. It will. And who might you be? Do I know you? You don't, but I know you. And I know the boy you just... Spend some time with. What? Oh, you? How? How dare you accuse me of such things? Roger, Roger, remove this ruffian from my sight. How is it, Sparks? I wonder if anyone's needing it. Oh, God! Help! Help! You really want to call for the guard? You know what happens to buggerers, Mr. Touche? You? 
You have no proof. No proof of those... those filthy lies. I have the boy. A, a filthy street urchin. Who would believe a lowlife like him? A, a pair of lowlifes. <laughs> Enough people will, Mr. Touche. You need to be smart about this. Even the rumors alone would be bad for your reputation. Don't you agree? A man of the church, a disgusting, lecherous buggering. All right. In God's name, what... what do you want? Why are you doing this? Relax. I'm not here to out you. In fact, I'm here to help you make a new friend. He can make all of this go away. You just need to talk to him. What? Who is that man? Did this new friend of mine arrange all this? Watch your mouth and remember who you're talking to. Read this. God in heaven! Avery! This is his doing! You're a smart man. For a pervert. Now shut up and go do what he told you to. This isn't just about that foolish war between him and Kensington, is it? Is this his attempt to get close to the Patriarchs? How does he expect me to help? Am I to be appalled in this insane obsession of his? Just go talk to the man. Wait a moment. You've no idea what I mean, do you? He sent you here, but you don't even know why, do you? What about it? The Patriarchs. That's what this is about. About Avery wanting to take Kensington's place among them. So you've got to be rich to become a patriarch. What's the point then? <sighs> What's the point of having a ship full of gold when you already have a room full of it? Becoming a patriarch is... It's just more than anything you imagine. It's like being a mere merchant one day and then being crowned king. There's nothing these men are not able to accomplish in the Caribbean when they're together. Nothing. That's why Kensington and Avery ate each other? No. They've been at each other's throats for a long time. They've hated each other for years. Kensington was in financial trouble at some point, and Avery moved in. He bought some properties of Kensington's, and it looked like he was about to become a truly influential man. But then, somehow, Kensington bounced back and overtook Avery again. How did Kensington become a patriarch and Avery didn't? Avery seems pretty damn rich. They were both rich. The patriarchs had been watching them for some time. Rumor has it that Kensington sucked up to one of them, was invited, and voted in before Avery. Then he started blocking Avery's access to them. How? With the patriarchs, everything has to be decided by a unanimous vote, or it doesn't happen. You can imagine that with Kensington in there, there would always be at least one vote that Avery could never get, and that's all it takes. He's been trying to undermine Avery ever since. Then these patriarchs are at war with Avery. No, no, they're neutral for the most part. But of course they support Kensington as one of their own. Supposedly, Kensington wanted Avery dealt with, but that's not the patriarch way. Extreme measures are only taken in dire situations. The patriarchs thrive on secrecy, and assassinations draw attention. And Avery didn't think to try that strategy? The same goes for him. The patriarchs are, well, they're a different breed of men. If they found Avery to be in improper standing, he'd never get a chance to join. Even without Kensington blocking him, Avery can't afford to strike at Kensington either. So Avery and Kensington are trying to cut each other down quietly. In a way, Kensington has the greater advantage. Avery is a very powerful man, but the Patriarch's floor is his ceiling. The Patriarchs might not be against him, but Kensington is. They would have probably accepted him by now if it weren't for Kensington. He is the only thing standing in Avery's way, but Avery can't hit him openly, or they'll lock him out forever. But they've both survived so far. I even thought that Avery had finally given up. <sighs> I should have known better. 
He's been scheming the whole time. Typical. The man is a snake in the grass. You seem to know a hell of a lot about these things. <laughs> Do you think the man I work for is just a governor? You think he would have become one without the support of a few friends? Like a round table of friends who vote. And you don't care about me knowing all this? If you can keep this small, <clears throat> vice of mine quiet, I don't mind anything. I can afford this to come out. It's hardly the kind of thing I could have swept under the rug. I'm not a patriarch. How do you do? All right. Just go talk to Avery, and this will all go away. I will. But the man is playing a dangerous game. His obsession with becoming a patriarch will cost him one day. And every one of them. Something nailing you? Can't you tell? I love him always what I do.
Let's rock this wind! Be brave, shock suckers! Shall we?
Guess you need... Anything you... followed again actually it's your demeanor Christopher in his infinite generosity God has given me a few tray and the ability to know what men are saying without words is one that I value most highly good for you do you need me to tell you what happened or did God already fill you in I surmise that mr. Touche will be paying me a visit shortly as to other details, I would expect you to tell me anything pertinent. That arrangement better start going both ways. I don't like being kept in the dark, Avery. Christopher, I have already told you. There are many events falling into place in many different ways. You need only worry yourself with the tasks I assign you. Leave the finer details to me. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your little scheme to get in close with the Patriarchs. <laughs> that Mr. Touche. He does talk, doesn't he? Enough for me to know that this isn't just a small detail. Do you really think you could keep this a secret from me? But Christopher, that's the whole point. 
you were going to find out within two more steps of our plan. There is a part of it that will require your knowledge of their existence. You were simply going to find out about it later. Once I was in too deep to walk away. Christopher, you truly are much more than a run-of-the-mill pirate. I knew I would do well to hire you. Hire me? You didn't hire me. I'm working with you, and let me make this clear. I don't give a damn about your rich man's games, your pompous patriarch bullshit, or this feud with Kensington. But I don't like being kept in the dark. It makes me angry. Fair enough, Christopher. As I said, you would have found out soon anyway. But I understand your concern. There are no more surprises planned. You have my solemn promise. Right. So what now? Now I shall await Mr. Touche's arrival. Meanwhile, you can proceed to the next part of the plan. Just who are they? Are the Patriarchs, I mean. In the simplest of terms, a group of men with considerable influence who have banded together so that their power might be increased exponentially. And in less simple terms? God has given a shepherd to every flock. Some shepherds lead one flock, others more. Some shepherds can lead a hundred flocks across a hundred islands. So it's a group of rich men who formed a little club to get things done, and you want to join them. That's what you're trying to say? Ah, oh, Christopher, you might as well describe the finest Grand Cru as a drink. How long has Kensington been with the Patriarchs? Oh, several years now. What matters is that he never should have been voted in in the first place. There are probably more perks to being a patriarch than just getting a fancy name. Let me put this in sailor's terms, Christopher. Imagine that your ship could suddenly reach any point in the world in an instant, as if by magic. This is but one analogy to the kind of power the patriarchs possess. Sounds worth the trouble. More than worth it, Christopher. So, how do you become a patriarch? One must be a man of high standing, a man of great influence, a patriarch. And have their unanimous support? Indeed. And but for one bus-filled boil, I would have had that long ago. Are any of the other patriarchs your enemy? No, Christopher. Some are still Kensington's close allies. But that is a different matter altogether, and it will soon change. One more thing. Marie expects a little help for the part she played in your little scheme. I told her you'd get the church to leave her to run her business without any more interference. I expect you to have it done. You've promised something to that fallen woman, and you expect me to help her, to have pity on a succubus incarnate. I'm not one to read the Bible, but didn't Jesus forgive the whores? Fair point, Christopher, and an astute observation. Yes, yes, that is the duty of a Christian, isn't it? To forgive, to comfort, to love one's neighbors oneself. I believe this may prove rather enjoyable, actually, to bring out the remaining good, even in the soul of a fallen woman. <laughs> Christopher, you continue to surprise me. I shall bring this up with my friend the bishop. Your Magdalene will be rewarded for her assistance. So what do we do next? A fine day, Christopher, made even better by a delivery I received today. Crates and crates of the finest produce available. It's already at my plantation. I prefer to move everything from the docks as soon as possible, lest it spoils in the sun. Salt can help with that. I know that. Do you think Kensington does? 
a shipload of his spices and sugar is due to sail to London tomorrow. Sugar and spices don't spoil. What's your point? But food does, in general. And most people think in simple terms, wouldn't you agree, Christopher? In their minds, spices are simply another kind of food. Food that could go bad just from sitting out. Or in this case, with a little help. I'm not following you. Speaking of help, I'm told my kitchen staff have been having problems with rats in the cellar recently. They use poison on the critters, the same kind they use on ships, odorless and supposedly tasteless, though I'm not sure what unfortunate soul was forced to come to that conclusion. Oh, and there's still plenty of that poison left, I hear. You have a ship, so you're welcome to collect as much of it as you might need and use it anywhere you find it's needed. Ah, uh, I think I get your meaning. I'm sure you are, Christopher. And your thoughts? Sounds like Kensington is about to have some problems with his supplies. And should that happen, how could he ever look the people of London in the eyes again? For that matter, how many Londoners would ever look at anything shipped from his plantation, I wonder? Bonjour. Ça passe? Uh, I need the powder you used to deal with your rat problem. Ah, oh, sans doute. En dedans cuisine. Never mind. Bonne journée.
<laughs> Mad <coughs> Clearless Mad Fire idiots! 
Shall we? Yes, you...
Shall we trade?
Hey, psst, Raven. I got a shit, what do you call it? A proposition for you. It involves shooting, murder, and money. Meet me round the corner if you're interested. How do you know me? I seen you around the harbor. I know you are Captain Raven. I'm at a jam, see? A bad jam. Who the hell are you? And what do your problems have to do with me? Name's Jonathan Bickle. Now I hear you got no love for the stinking Brits, and plenty of love for gold. Who doesn't? What's the job? It's like this. I got into a game of cards that went all to hell and things turned bloody. Bastard was a cheat, so I ended him. On my way out, I got into a scrape with a British patrol and stuck a knife into a few of them. No one holds a grudge like the damn Brits. I thought we were talking about making me some gold. Right. Well, the bastards are guarding the harbor. And now a pack of them are watching me ship, waiting for me to make a run for it. If I stay much longer, they'll find me and snap me damn neck. Sounds like you're in a jam, all right. You think so, eh? Look, you help me get rid of the guards watching my ship. Then help me fight my way out of the harbor. You do that, I'll make it more than worth your while. All right, but you better have the money. Ah, oh, I knew the rumors were true. Here's the plan. Go tell the guards you've seen me, and I'm about to get into another scrape. If they take the bait, we'll take out the bosses that stand on guard, then sail out of here like our arses are on fire. And what happens when we clear the harbor? There are three ships out there waiting. Between the two of us, we should be able to fight our way through no problem. My crew's still on my ship under watch. They're smart, boys. My ship should be ready to sail. We gotta hurry up and sink those Brits, though. We get in a long fight, and reinforcements are bound to come quick. I've heard worse plans. All right, let's see if they take the bait. Clear the way, civilian. We're looking for a fugitive. Keep moving. Your fugitive wouldn't be a man named Jonathan Bickle, would it? Rough-looking guy? What do you know about him? If he's the fellow that stabbed a few of your men like dogs, I just passed him a ways up the street. He's about to gut some poor bastard trying to protect his wife. You'd think you boys could do a better job keeping men like that off the streets. Ha! We've got him! Men, let's go find that worm. You and you, come with me. And the rest of you, stay here in case he slips past us. At arms, men! He's right there! This bastard tricked us! I tell you. Now, quick, let's set sail and take out those three guarding the arbor.
Avengers! Set on sale, you kids! Let's rock this wind! As you wish!
And why sh I'm so I'll be good. Saint Nicholas preserve us. Are you saw play it? It looked all oh. he you oh, the f speaks all that. Them boots ain't worth half of us. Taking up that offer. Then again, maybe this is better. Shithead! Be brave, 
shit, asses! Hire dogs! What a red city. Shall we try? A watch map never burns. Watch where you're going, you fool. So 
of a wet bitch, you have any idea who I am? your step. I and why should I be concerned about that, old man? I might be looking. What's your price? So, what's the catch? All right. I'll be going then. Sorry. Are you Sawford's client? Client? More like experiment! That lunatic surgeon cut off me fucking leg! It looks like a clean cut to me. Oh, it's clean, all right. Problem is, it was my finger that needed to be cut! Look, I need you to back off. He's under my protection now. He cut off my leg! I'm not backing off of anything until he's short a fucking leg! You keep pushing this, you're gonna lose more than a leg. Don't test me. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you to tell me? What the hell do you think you're doing? You're in trouble? <sighs> Too. I'm sorry, I'm on my way. way. I'm curious. What? Okay. Asking for it, ask that. Yes. 
Jesus. Hey, watch out! Oh, my apologies. Damn love cap. You wanna look something, huh? I have a feeling Kensington's spices are not as bland anymore. In every crate. Perfect. Perhaps less so for the customers in London, but... Uh, oh well. By the way, Kensington has been summoned to a meeting. It appears that explanations are expected. Consequences may follow if he cannot offer any. Guess your patriarchs are getting tired of him. You're a smart man under all that pirate filth you cloak yourself in, Christopher. I take it you are ready to move on with the next step? The sooner, the better. I have long known that it is God's will that Kensington should fall, Christopher. And now in his wisdom, he has graciously confirmed it. By a miracle of his, you have obtained unexpected information that can serve us so well that we need only seize the opportunity. Truly, it is a time of great expectations. What are you talking about? The letter you have so skillfully secured for us, Christopher, it concerns money. Kensington's money, or rather, the money he owes someone. Our efforts have been paying off, and Kensington has felt the results in his pocket. He's been forced to quietly take out an emergency loan. And you're going to push the lender to demand the money right now? Close, but in fact, I was thinking of just the opposite. Poor Kensington has suffered so much recently that he could use a little relief, and we could provide it to him. What? Just imagine if the creditor were to suddenly disappear. He has no family, no heirs, no business partners. There would be no one left to demand the payment, and Kensington would be left in the clear. How the hell is that supposed to hurt him? Christopher, at some point, a man learns that money, once lost, can always be made back. But a loss of reputation is nigh impossible to recover. You see, the creditor in question happens to be quite well known in certain circles, including by a few patriarchs. Kensington isn't the first one to borrow from him. Now, if our creditor to, were to mysteriously disappear shortly after giving out a major loan to another man well known to the patriarchs, who might they suspect? And they'd give a damn. Some would. Our creditor is not only useful to quite a few of them, but well acquainted with at least two that I know of. Of course, they couldn't be certain. There would be no evidence. But they would begin to look at Kensington with distrust and distaste, and they would quietly make it known to others. They'd have to know about the loan, though. Didn't you say Kensington's keeping it under wraps? 
true. If only someone in the know could inform them of it. Someone who would do it anonymously, discreetly. Someone who would consider it his Christian duty to let the truth come out. Right. So where is that creditor? I do appreciate your assumption. You think I already have it all planned out, don't you? And you're right, of course. This will point you straight to the man. The outcome, I'm sure, will depend on how inventive you are. There is only one stipulation. He really must disappear. In other words, nothing must be left behind. What for? You'll be dead anyway. Precisely. But there needs to be room for doubt about his fate. Nothing nags to man so much as uncertainty. Doubts grow stronger the longer they last, Christopher. So if the man were to disappear, but some ominous trace were left behind, say his favorite hat drenched in blood, would it not make some people think? You know, for a rich and law-abiding man, you sure know how these things work. As the great Terence once said, homo sum humani nihil a me alienum puto. In a word, nothing that's human is alien to me. Sure. Hey, 
brakes. Shall we? Yes.
Let's rub this! Not to Let's go! 
Anything you need, you'll find it here. Trade. Shall we trade?
who are you? This isn't personal. What do you... What do you... What I... No! Jesus Christ! Help me! Help me! Help me! Come on! And how is Kensington's credit? There's one moneylender he's not going to have to pay off. I still can't see how this won't make him happy. If that's the case, then I assure you, Christopher, it will be short-lived. He has less and less to be happy about with each passing day, in any case. His star among the patriarchs is fast falling. And yours is rising. God's gracious hand has recently pointed some people in my direction. The day may soon come when more hands will have shaken mine than have ever wished to touch Kensington. Yeah, let's hurry that day up. Do you remember the time we spoke of chess, Christopher? I take it another piece needs to disappear. Very true. This time, however, it's Kensington who's sending goods to a very important partner of his. A partner who will be most displeased when he does not receive what he has paid for. Well, who wouldn't be? Indeed, the ship has just recently left our lovely island, so it should be all too easy for you to catch up, shall we? Just show me the route. Of course. Our earlier arrangement stands, I think. The ship must be gone for good. Understand?
Guess you need... Good news for us. Less so for Kensington's partner, I expect. Well, that ship isn't going anywhere. A prayer for all the souls who perished abroad would not be amiss. Would you care to join me, Christopher? I'd rather focus on the next kill. I'll leave the praying to you. Your impatience is sometimes a great asset, Christopher. Kensington has been increasing his security, Christopher. A small squad of men recently arrived, having crossed the ocean, as I understand. Well-trained, supposedly, and no doubt Kensington believes that they're the answer to his recent problems. But they're not. Spot on, Christopher. How vain would you say Kensington is? I don't know. Can't say I care. You should. As it happens, he is vain enough to have ordered matching uniforms for those new thugs of his. Or perhaps he considered it added security. The why doesn't matter. What does matter is that most can already tell these fools by their appearance and they know they're dealing with Kensington's latest, if not bravest. And that is quite useful from our point of view. Useful for what? Useful for what? Imagine someone were to commit some foul deeds while dressed in that fine new garb. Who would be blamed? The trained monkeys? Or the master who couldn't keep them in line? Or who, quite possibly, even encouraged them to sin? Let me guess. I hunt them down, steal their uniforms, put them on, and break some heads. Almost. But stop at the uniforms for now. Those are all I require at the moment. Collect them and bring them to me, please. Pay no heed to the well-being of their current wearers. But why stop there? All we need is one uniform to get things done. Everything in due time. And I do need all of their little outfits. You are my sword of choice in my duel against Kensington, Christopher, but I have other swords. The uniforms will come in quite handy for them. I thought you were taking care of this other side. The schemes, the information... And a touch more. I need you for more important matters, Christopher. You need not concern yourself with trivialities. How many do you need? A dozen will do just fine. That is how many Kensington bought for that new gang of his.
Shall we trade? Christopher, I understand your collection has grown. A dozen pieces. And a most useful dozen it will be. And while we're on the subject of what will be useful... Let's keep this moving. One more thing, Christopher. I know you've been irritated with the timing of our plan. Perhaps you would like to take care of another matter at the same time? As long as it gets me Kensington. That's precisely what I have in mind. It's so useful to have friends in high places, isn't it? You would know. Indeed. Yet some time ago I learned that, for certain tasks, the opposite is needed. Friends in low places. And you happen to have such friends, Christopher. Something in Bridgetown again? 
she won't help for free. Not what I had in mind. No, Christopher. Far lower than that. The lowest kind of all. The outcasts. The runaways. The ones they call the Maroons. You're certainly well informed. But if you're thinking they can be hired to fight against Kensington, that's not how they work. Everything's personal to them. Exactly. That's why it was so satisfying to learn that Kensington is no stranger among them. How's that? Did you know that, not long before your arrival, there was an attempted slave revolt at Kensington's plantation? A clan of long-escaped slaves tried to overrun the place and free Kensington's slaves in the process. They failed miserably, of course. Kensington had been warned well in advance, and they had no weapons to speak of. Many were killed. I would imagine that their kin are thirsting for vengeance. If someone were to reach out to them, someone known to them, perhaps, and inform them that an opportunity for revenge had presented itself, complete with plenty of muskets and a well-thought-out plan, do you think they might be interested? Yes. The question is where to find them. They don't tend to go around announcing their presence. But they can't always hide, either. Last time, it was Kensington's ears who overheard their plans. This time, it was mine. You know where they are? I know where they are planning to be. Some of them were talking about how they would need supplies. Apparently, they think that once the merchant's ships dock, there will be enough goods for everyone. If they're planning to raid the harbor, things may get too hot for any discussion. No one would expect you to approach them during their little operation, Christopher. But all thieves take their loot somewhere, don't they? I suppose they might be more talkative after they've succeeded. If they do succeed. Oh, I suspect they might. Especially if, at just the right moment, someone were to pacify the contingent of guards stationed at the docks. Let me guess. A friend of yours? It ought to put them in good spirits, I'd imagine. And consequently, make it easier for you to talk to them. I only know a handful of them. They don't exactly welcome me with open arms. I'm still an outsider as far as most of them are concerned. And I would presume that, at the very least, some of the Maroons around these parts know some of your companions. This alone puts you at an advantage over everyone else. What exactly happened with the failed slave revolt? Loose lips and Kensington's vigilant scouts. The slaves were exposed long before they ever approached the plantation. And the weapons? Kensington's men are well armed, as you know. The slaves were not. With the element of surprise, they might have stood a chance, I suppose. As it was, it was like chickens trying to invade a foxhole. If you just need to leak the information to them, anyone could do that. Why not Ray? I believe those slaves are most distrustful of anyone they don't know. And of course, Ray does not very much care for their kind. <laughs> not unless it involves disciplining them, in any case. So if they were to hit Kensington again, You'd help them. Not personally. 
Heavens, no. Can you imagine me running around Kensington's place waving around a weapon? <laughs> but they certainly could count on information and intelligence and some, shall we say, unofficial support. The dogs must be well-fed before they are sent up against the boar. You could send one of your slaves to talk to them. They'd trust one of their own. Ah, oh, Christopher. For a moment there, I almost thought you were serious. An amusing jest, no doubt. Well, I suppose, philosophically speaking, the idea of sending out a soulless creature to talk to other soulless creatures would make for an interesting exercise in debate. But realistically, one might as well send a dog, of course. You said you could provide them with weapons now? Weapons could certainly be obtained, then simply left in an unguarded location. An easy matter, and quite straightforward. I'll leave you to your thoughts. How kind of you. I do so enjoy their company. Why, devils, you always think we are foolish savages, blind and deaf. You thought we couldn't see you following us. You are the fool! Wait, wait, you don't understand. I'm here to talk. You will do no talking, devil. You will scream. You know who Marcus is, don't you? I'm his friend. Blue eyes, you lie. Your man, Peppy. Is he here? He knows me. Just tell him Christopher's. We know who you are, Snake. You came for the bounty. Instead, you will find your death. You're making a mistake. Enough from you, forked tongue. Gabo-o! gabo -o. Stop this madness. Christopher. What are you doing here? What's all this fighting about? I'll do respect, Marcus, but he's a traitor. We want him dead. This is Christopher Raven we're talking about, Coffee. Be careful what you say. We you know who I'm talking about. Ray. Back then, nobody did the slaves more harm. Ray. That's right. This has to be a misunderstanding. We'll get this sorted out. We just need to talk with Christopher. Christopher, will you say something already? Kofi and the others, they must be wrong, right?
Ray is only a tool. I don't like the bastard either. But all I care about is that he leads me where I want to go. So it's true. Chris, nothing good can come out of siding with the devil. What would you know about siding with the devils, Marcus? What is this really about, Chris? Does this have something to do with your pursuit of Neville? So you believe he's returned after all? Look, Marcus, I came here because I need the Maroons' help. Doesn't look like they're in the mood to help you. Quite the opposite, in fact. We can help each other. Listen, I know you and your people tried to take Kensington's plantation and failed, but Kensington is more than just a plantation owner. He's more than his little political career, too. Marcus, Kensington is Neville's right-hand man. Your people's interests and mine are the same. If I can convince them to attack Kensington's plantation again, I can get them the weapons we need to take it down. I get Kensington, they free the slaves, everyone wins. And forget Ray, he's just a means to an end. The Maroons can have him when it's over. Neville's right hand, eh? I don't know, Chris. That plantation was well guarded, and we lost a lot of men, and the Maroons aren't going to cooperate with Ray. Ray is working for a man named Avery now, and Avery is the key to the whole plan. Avery wants Kensington to lose, and he's willing to throw his whole weight into this. Weapons, supplies, whatever we need. I don't trust either one of them, believe me, but I need them for this. Talk with Kofi then. Maybe you can convince him. He is still furious over how many men were lost when the last attack failed. Everything else aside, Chris, it is good to see you. Same with you, Marcus. Coffee, I came here to speak to you about your people. I've got a plan that can help us both, us and your people. You and your slaver have a plan, do you? I heard it didn't go too well at Kensington's plantation. What's that got to do with anything? You have unfinished business there, and I can help you finish it. Since when do you care about the Maroons' fight, eh? Cheat you? I'm offering your people the chance to get revenge, and supplying the weapons. These are nice words, but nothing more. First, tell me about this plan of yours. I'm working with a powerful enemy of Kensington, who hates him almost as much as you do. He's ready to supply your people with weapons, if you agree to raid his plantation again. They want him killed? Not right away. It's complicated. For you, the most important thing is that you'll be able to free the slaves. I'll make sure Kensington dies later. I guarantee it. And this goes for Ray, too. Hmm. And you would be with us during this attack? Yes. I tell you what, white man. My people will cooperate. But we require a blood sacrifice first, and we want you to partake in it. Something your new friend would not be happy to know about. I want to make sure you are not going to cheat us. Coffee, the devils are coming, they found us. You, this bastard must have brought them here. Did you, is that your game? Let's get ready to welcome them instead of wasting time.
Let me kill him now, Kofi. He's a snake. I promised him a chance, Shaka. Now we fight. I'll be watching him. And if I have any doubts, I'll kill him myself. This is madness. I have decided. Shaka, now get everyone ready. I'll let you decide whose side I'm on. I will. Remember, I'm watching you. You're better off watching yourself in a fight. I have more than one pair of eyes. You still doubt me? I doubt most men. Sometimes I find cause to doubt one of them less than before. Guess that's as much as I'm going to get right now. Meet me at the beach. We'll talk alone. <laughs> Here, we can talk. What do you mean, blood sacrifice? You are right about one thing. I want to give those Kensington slaves their freedom. And for this goal, I would ride with the devil himself. However, you follow your own secret ways and our people do not trust you. We want Ray delivered to us. He is a slaver and he must pay for his sins. We do not trust you, but we are hungry for revenge as well. We're just going to use Ray until he's served his purpose, and I'm not going to let Kensington live. I can promise you that. He and I have a history. You can trust me on that. We want a show of your intentions, a rite of blood sacrifice for the Gedi. If we cannot have Ray now, so be it. But there is someone close to Ray. His mind is that of a child, but he is much more dangerous. He likes to play with people. And Ray, he has given him plenty of toys to play with. Mainly our women and our children. There's someone Ray cares about? Even the worst men have friends. Ray's his name solely. What's making you celebrate these old rites here today? You're a long way from the land of your ancestors. <laughs> White man, maybe your gods leave you just because you cross the sea, but our loi always, always with us. Urzuli has protected us, but the Gede are restless. They demand blood. So are we agreed? Fine. What do I need to do for your right? Ray keeps Soli nearby. Since the simpleton is not bright enough to look after himself, go find him and lure him outside. Then bring him to Reaper's Point.
You? You come see Sully? Ray sent me, Sully. Sully know you. Sully seen you with Ray. You Ray's new friend. Why Ray don't come? Uh, Ray don't like Sully no more. He's busy, uh, preparing a nice surprise for you. You know, the kind you like. Oh, <laughs> little surprise for Sully. Don't you want to know more? Don't want? No, Sally won't. You, you, you tell. Ray wants you to go to a special place and wait for him there. For surprise? Don't tell him I told you, but yes, you'll like it, I'm sure. Sally, leave now. As fast as you can, Sully boy. <laughs> Sally, ready. And? I brought Sully. He's all yours. Good. We will take care of the rest. And our deal? Now you can stand together with the Maroons. My people are with you. As soon as they finish with the Devil's little brother. Wait. Sully? He's Ray's brother? Are you surprised? You, you don't look surprised. That's enough out of you. Time to die. What? Get him! Bobby! About time to look for a little place just around the corner. Ah! Christopher, finally. I was concerned for your safety. One never knows with those savages. I take it everything went well? It did. They're eager to have another go at Kensington. They'd do it tomorrow if we were ready. Ha <laughs> ha! Impatience! 
It seems that you and the savages have something in common. I am speaking in jest, of course. One would never imply that a Christian shared any traits with their ilk. They do sustain themselves by stealing, don't they? Robbing ships and innocent people? Among other things. I wonder if the itineraries of a handful of ships belonging to Kensington and of his trading partners outside the West Indies would be of any use to them. I'm sure it would. Idle curiosity. You see, a document of the kind just happens to have fallen in my hands recently. I've no real use for it. I thought of archiving it, but I've positively no place to put it. Perhaps you could keep it instead, Christopher. Don't tell me. A gift from a recent clerk friend of yours. I'll take it. The Maroons will be glad to know what to hit. Oh, I need not know the details, Christopher. I'm sure you'll put it to good use, and that is all I need to know. Incidentally, you look a little tired. Wouldn't you like a moment's rest? When I'm done. So much vigor. I envy you sometimes. I too am a man of simple needs and modest tastes, but my life keeps me less uh, passionately animated. What is the secret of your vitality, I wonder? Revenge sustains me. How interesting. I believe I shall stick with wine then. It's gentle on the stomach and gladdens the heart. Where do we go from here? Your visits are truly enjoyable to me, Christopher. I'm glad someone's enjoying them. How much longer is this going to take? We are entering the final stages of our plan. Where just a while ago Kensington was a robust tree with deep roots, together we have been able to reduce him to a diseased and unstable trunk ready to fall at any moment. He's still trying to reach out, desperate for support now, but in fact, only one of the patriarchs still firmly stands behind him no doubt due to his long-standing friendship with Kensington. Others have been quite approachable. Their disappointment with Kensington has been growing. So the patriarch that supports him, he's the target. He certainly expects to be. He has received some information from several highly trusted men, I might add, about an upcoming rebellion on his grounds. I understand he is quite alarmed. So alarmed, in fact, he's reached out to his good friend, asking him for supplies and extra men to help guard the grounds and quell the said rebellion. Kensington. Indeed, Christopher. Of course, Kensington, always the liar, plays the role of the concerned friend. As soon as he heard of the man's worries, he immediately launched a ship full of battle-hardened men, the two-faced snake acting as if he cared for friendship rather than his own gain. But sadly, the ship will only reach one destination, and it isn't the one he intends. Let me guess. The bottom of the sea. Exactly. And you'll be its guide. Nobody likes a man who breaks promises, especially those made by close friends. I am afraid Kensington's last ally will soon see why the other patriarchs shun him. And the rebellion will succeed. I need to let the Maroons know about this. Oh, they must. They will be a crucial piece of our little rebellion. But the rebellion will not be where Kensington expects it. It's too bad Kensington has sent so many of his men away, leaving his property vulnerable. So this rebellion... Will take place on Kensington's grounds, yes. Our plan is almost finished. Alert your maroon companions. As soon as you return from the sea, the attack will commence. By then, everything will be in place. The maroons will have all the weapons they need. All right. First the ship, then the rebellion. Even the words themselves, so promising. 
We're just a step away from the final goal. Speak for yourself. My goal is still far away. You better be ready to help me achieve mine. Of course, Christopher. I haven't promised you just Kensington, have I? Have faith in me. With the Lord on my side, we will always have what we desire.
Santos. Guess you need... Another tragedy at sea. For Kensington. By now he must be feeling a bit like Job. But unlike Job, God will not be there to eventually show him mercy. Ah, well, such is life for the unjust. Right. Are the weapons for the Maroons ready? Indeed they are. However, there is another thing we must first take care of. We agreed we'd start as soon as I got back. Here I am. No more games, no more waiting. We move now. Nothing has changed regarding the rebellion. While you were at sea, I've learned from our new friend that there is quite the opportunity for us to take advantage of. It is an opportunity best not missed, and it will mean a day's postponement at worst. So what is it? The royal court asked to see Kensington? Patience, Christopher, patience. The Patriarch ally of Kensington's has asked him for another favor. Besides the men and supplies, of course. What? Another damn ship? Better. Anticipating the rebellion, the Patriarch has sent his son away from the plantation until it is safe for him to return. He's asked his trusted friend Kensington to accommodate the youngster. Kensington agreed, of course, and promptly installed the man's offspring in a remote location almost no one knows about. Almost no one. And your point is? I'm told the Patriarch is as attached to his son as Abraham was to Isaac. Imagine his grief if the young man were to meet the fate that was supposed to be Isaac's. Imagine his fury at the friend who has failed to protect his son. How many ways are we going to do Kensington in? The Maroons are ready to hit this plantation right now! And by next sundown, they will. And with Kensington's last friend gone, no one will lift a finger to do anything about it. He'll already be plenty pissed at Kensington when the ship full of men don't arrive. But that will pass. Remember, there will be no rebellion at his plantation. Such anger will evaporate quickly. But this... If his son, whom he trusted to Kensington, were to shuffle off this mortal coil... Can you imagine? Why, his hatred of Kensington would likely surpass even yours, Christopher. I'm getting very tired of your twists and changes. I understand your fervor, 
But what's one more day, Christopher, when we can drive the final nail into Kensington's coffin so deeply that he will never get out? All right, but this is the last time. Delay again, and I'll move without you. Splendid, Christopher. Of course, I need not remind you of the gravity of the task. This time, it is not about a low life in an alley or a corrupt clerk. Discretion is paramount. Ray will accompany you, of course. I know what's at stake. You just make sure everything's ready when I'm done. I give you my word, Christopher. We will move on Kensington as soon as this is done. This final step will ensure his downfall. Should drown. Men drown accidentally all the time. That works for me. It can't look suspicious. I'm sure there'll be an opportunity. There will be. You already scout the place? I've seen enough. Let's split up. I'll meet you there. Guess you need your boat. Guess you need... I'll be waiting for you. Or I'll be waiting for you. Sure, pirate.
Still want to kill me? Not now, but I will later. Give it your best shot. Odette, you have my word. I saw you bring Sully here. I guess you're the one in charge of the sacrifice. No. I am one with Erzuli. She takes her sacrifices in war. When an enemy clashes with our warriors, Erzuli will take his death gladly. Kensington and all his men, they will die so Erzuli may grow stronger. But the man, Sully, he is no warrior. Kofi says he killed the defenseless. His sacrifice would insult Erzuli greatly. So you're not going to kill him? Shaka will, personally. But he's not sided with Erzuli. He looks to the Gidi, and they are bloodthirsty. They are chaos. They will take anyone's blood, even our own.
trouble walking. You, sir. Oh. Took you long enough. <laughs> you joke too much. Good. I don't like jokers. Knew a buck once at the plantation. He thought he was a joker. Had him sawed in half. <laughs> That's a great story. Did you find him? Is he alone? For now, come on. You, you startled me. Hey, I haven't seen you around here before. Are you Kensington's new servant? Not quite. Ah, I see. More guards, eh? And Father said Kensington's been having money problems. Certainly doesn't look like it. Oh, there. Now, enough of this shit. Kill him, and we're out of here. Huh? What? What is this? Some kind of joke? There's no need for that. What is this? What, what is that for? Dear God, Jesus. God, man. What are you doing? I don't want any trouble. Kill him. Sir, I have no money. What was that noise? What is... Oh, dear God! Jason! What have you done to Jason? Get that bitch! Shit, she saw us. Kill that whore! ruined everything great no way to make this look like an accident now I'll take care of this you tell mr. Avery that everything's fine by yourself I've made plenty of bodies disappear a woman should be no different you never killed a woman I've never bothered to hide their corpses before
God damn it, are you ugly and blind? I must confess that I have high expectations, Christopher. We must not transgress against piety. I fear I shall have to say more prayers than usual tonight. Then you can add the Patriarch's family to your prayers as well. Sadly, his family is dead. Ah, that is truly saddening. I shall ask the Lord to receive them with open arms. The rebellion at Kensington's happens now. No more waiting. Absolutely, Christopher. Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. What dogs? Oh, forgive me, please. I let the moment fill me with pride, I'm afraid. Thank heavens for your straightforward nature that has prevented the sin. I merely meant to say that you may unleash your slave companions any time you please. It's about time. Perfect. Take this, please. It's where your friends can find their weapons. I shall pray for your complete and utter success. Oh, uh, and, and there is something else you've been waiting to hear. It concerns Mr. Neville. You found out where he is? You will learn everything upon your return, Christopher. I have promised to lead you to Mr. Neville, and my word is my bond. I'll be back soon. Farewell, Christopher.
I've been sailing these seas for many a year. <laughs> Spending me days
haven't seen any signs of danger. It worries me, Marcus. Tutula is having visions. His dreams are filled with flames. Ah, Tutuala. Chris! Marcus, coffee. We're set. Everything's ready. If you are. Kensington, finally. We've been ready for a long time. Now we strike. And the weapons? You'll find them here. Thank you. Just remember not to kill Kensington outright. We've gone through all this trouble to break him. Let him soak in it. I could get used to that idea. Kensington watching his empire burn to ashes is fine with me. Then this is it for Kensington. Your partner Avery has broken him, and now we end him. Not yet. I'll slit his throat soon enough, and don't you forget who will be holding the blade. I won't forget, but I'm curious. Kensington will live to see the morning, but still, you are happy. Do you look forward to the chance to kill this much? It's just not that. Avery knows where Neville is. After this, so will I. I see. There's nothing I can say that would make you stop this mad chase, is there? <laughs> Are you serious? I didn't give up when I was half dead from poison. You think I'd give up now? When I'm this close? I know you won't, Chris. That's what worries me. You worry too much, old man. Everything is coming together. Tonight, your people will have their revenge. I'll have my own soon enough. Yes. I'll have to go with Kofi and the others. Do you want to join us? I'll meet you at Kensington's plantation. I'll see you there. My people are ready, Chris. Time to go. Let's take care of the guards outside first. Then we'll meet with the first of Kingsington's slaves. Their elder knows me. Fine. Make sure to tell them what I told Coffee. Kensington's got to survive today. man I knew trusted a white devil once. The devil sold him after breaking his legs. A man cannot escape on crippled legs. He can still mill sugar cane dough. Go! 
Finally, let's free the first of the slaves. Why so grim, Marcus? Enjoy your revenge? This isn't revenge, Chris. This is justice. Call it whatever you want. I'm just happy to be using my blades. Come on, I'll tell the slaves their freedom is here. All right. Anything? The master is expecting you. Sometimes. I'm here to finish our business. Where's Avery? Inside. Waiting for you. Come. So he finally found out how to get to Neville. There are very few things that escape Mr. Avery's attention. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent. Christopher, once again your timing is impeccable. I don't have much time. Where is he? Come now, Christopher. My tastes are simple and my needs are few, but your gift of Mr. Kensington's fate has been so satisfying. Now that it's over, I'd like to savor it for a moment, like a glass of fine wine, if you will. 
It's not over yet. Kensington is still breathing. Of course, of course, as we agreed. I'll need him alive no longer than a month. Then he's yours. Haven't you already taken over his position? Why keep him alive at all? The Patriarchs have embraced me, yes. But a few matters still must be settled before the finale. These are delicate subjects. Some events needn't be pushed. Wouldn't want your new friends to get upset. Have you asked her permission to kill him yet? Killing him now would hardly be sporting anyway, Christopher. I hear he has barely a man left by his side now, and has been spending his days sitting on a porch, silent, like a broken piece of furniture. A toast to the present, and a bright future. Hmm. I'll pass. Oh, that's not for you. I know your palate runs in a different direction. I'm expecting someone quite soon. Well then, if you just tell me where Neville is, I'll get out of your way. Of course, not to worry. I'm a man of my word. My exact word may sometimes change, but my word does not. If I recall, I said I would lead you to Captain Neville Scranton. But you've been so useful to us, I've decided to save you some legwork, pirate. Of course you do. Glad to see someone's enjoying themselves. I hope this means Marcus is working on a plan to get me out of here. So this is the man who plans to kill me, eh? Oh, you're a feisty one. They told me a rather brutal man has been hunting me. They didn't mention he's some kind of mad dog. I thought for sure I'd recognize you, but no, I've never seen you before in my life. Although you do look familiar. Tell me, who did I kill to inspire such passion in you? I'll tell you as I rip your belly open with my hook. Well, how interesting. As much as I'd like to see a man accomplish a goal he set forth for himself, I'm afraid you'll be quite dead soon. Has no one mentioned that you're to be hung? Uh, why don't you let me out of here if you're so curious? The two of us can have a long chat. Or is the great Neville Scranton beaten so easily? On the contrary, you've already been very helpful to me. Getting rid of Kensington was a necessary chore, but I've just been so busy lately. You filled in nicely. So Weaver was working for you the entire time. Ah, you're not just a flailing cutlass after all. Yes. Kensington thought himself quite indestructible since his political career began to blossom. I'm afraid he'd forgotten who helped him gain his little slice of power. So you have him destroyed. And here I thought you two were so close, like blood brothers. It seems like you've certainly spilled enough together. You do remind me of someone. It's absolutely maddening. Are you sure you don't want to tell me who you are? Ah? Huh? 
Well, no matter. I suppose I'll have to be content knowing you're dead. Farewell. And thanks again for all your hard work. Neville, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Goodbye. Chris, thank God. Marcus, how did you... First, let's get you out of there. Guess you haven't come alone. Every Maroon in St. John has helped. My people are indebted to you. As soon as we found out what happened, we came this way. Thanks. Are you all right? Nothing that killing Avery won't fix. Avery should have killed you when he had the chance. He won't live to regret his mistake. And what about Never? I need to kill two men tonight. One of them has to know about Neville, but I think I'll torture them both, just to be sure. Marcus told us you would follow that course. I spoke to my people. We're ready to move against Avery as soon as you give the word. Kensington will be easy. He's a broken man. Avery may be more difficult. He's in a much stronger position than he was before. But he's not expecting anything, isn't he? With the slaves we freed, our numbers are greater than ever. <laughs> and of course, we will still have the weapons he gave us. <laughs> I'm sure there's a fitting quote in the Bible somewhere. We're ready to move any time. I take it you're not waiting for rest. Then let us go. We're ready, Chris. Good. As someone once told me, let's slip the dogs of war. Dogs? Never mind. Let's move it, Marcus.
Christopher! Chris! God! Don't <laughs> let me burn! I think I like you right where you're at. It was all Neville's doing. My hands were tied. I... I'm a patriarch now. I can give you anything you want. <laughs> oh, really? Anything? For God's sake, man! Just name it! <laughs> I want to hear you scream. God damn you, wait! Uh, uh, at least kill me. Don't let me die like this. Chris! Christopher! Here. Mm, do it yourself, Patriarch. There's enough gunpowder for one shot. <laughs> but gunpowder by itself isn't enough. No, no, wait! There's that scream I was looking for. What a way to go. First time I didn't see him pray. Men show their true faces when death approaches. Now it's Kensington's turn. My people were excited when I told them. They'd accepted that they would have to wait to see his death. This was a good surprise. The day's been full of surprises. This came sooner than you said. Not soon enough. Bist du zurückgekommen, um dich an meinem Elend zu falten? Rat weiter. Warte, wenn es um Geld geht, ich zahle das Doppelte von dem, was Avery dir verspricht. Ich fürchte, du verstehst gar nichts, Kensington. Was gibt's da groß zu verstehen? Du bist Averys neuer Bluthund. 
Hat er endlich genug von diesem Ray? Ray ist tot. Genau wie Avery. Aber wenn du nicht... Neville... Hör mir zu. Neville wird sein Wort nicht halten. Was immer er dir versprochen hatte, spielt keine Rolle. Wenn du mich umlegst, dann wirst du der Nächste sein. Nein. Neville stirbt gleich nach dir. Ich... Ich verstehe nicht. Das musst du auch nicht. Warte. Du bist hinter Neville her? Ich... Ich weiß, was er vorhat. Warum sollte Neville dir seine Pläne verraten? Er hat dich gerade ruiniert. Denkst du, ich bin so naiv und traue ihm? Ich lasse ihn schon eine Weile beobachten. Er... Er ist hinter dem Piratenjäger her. Diesem Santorio. Santorio? <lacht> Warum sollte Neville sich die Mühe machen? Weil der selbstgerechte Pedant ein paar kleine Fische hochgenommen hat, was so nebenbei Nevilles Pläne durchkreuzt hat. Santorio hat Neville blamiert, ohne es zu wissen. Deshalb wird Neville ihn nicht am Leben lassen. Keiner, der jemals seine Wege gestört hat, ist davongekommen. Kein einziger. Denkst du gerade über deine eigenen Fehler nach Kensington? All deine Sünden. Für jeden ist ein Zahltag. Nicht nur für deinen alten Captain. Warte einen Moment. Das Ganze hat mit Avery gar nichts zu tun. Du... Deine Hand, ich... Hör zu, wenn wir uns schon mal begegnet sind, ist es ewig her. Bitte, was immer es war, ich kann mich gar nicht daran erinnern. Ich weiß. Bitte warte. Du... Du musst das nicht tun. Sieh dich doch um, verdammt. Alles, was ich hatte, es ist alles zerstört. Neville hat mich ruiniert. Meine Männer sind weg. Sogar mein Leibwächter. Gatto. 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 Zu schade, Kensington. Ich hätte dich in Würde sterben lassen. Was mehr ist, als meiner Familie vergönnt war. How did he die? Badly. Good. I'm leaving now. I've done all I needed to do. Where's Marcus? Hurt in the fight. Bad. My people are taking care of him. What do you mean, where is he? Don't worry, Christopher. Marcus is an old bastard. But he's tough now. He should not die. We took him back home. Yours? No, his place. He insisted. Leaking like a boat full of holes, and he insists on traveling? Damn it, Marcus.
mission, not to worry. I'm too late. Christopher, thank you for coming. <laughs> Why so solemn, old man? Solemn? You expect me to get up and dance every time I'm happy? <laughs> uh, how's the arm? Uh, it's mending. I must be getting old, letting a pack of amateurs get the best of me like that. But a little rum, and I'll be right as rain in no time. Here, let me help you with that. So, what did you want to talk to me about? Come see me in St. Lucia? I need to show you something? Bit cryptic, don't you think? You know, your message actually gave me a funny chill. Reminded me of something I saw on that island. Well, I didn't really see it, I guess. Ah, uh, never mind. It's nothing. No. Tell me. It's ridiculous. I was hallucinating, having some kind of fever dream. In the dream, you were there, and you said you had something to show me, a surprise. I followed you, but you led me into a trap, right to a damn dragon. I thought it had me, but I killed it in the end. Anyway, like I said, I was in a fever, seeing all kinds of things. I shouldn't even brought it up. <laughs> Unless you're hiding a dragon in that box. No. No dragon. But I do have something for you. I've tried to do this a hundred times over the years, but it was never the right time. At least that's what I kept telling myself. I've always thought of you as my own son, Chris. I want you to know that I've always tried to protect you. I... I... This is for you. It was your father's. My father's? Why didn't you give this to me years ago? Wait a minute. What's going on here? What aren't you telling me? Huh? Tell me! Christopher. The day your family was killed, I... I... Christopher. The day your family was killed, I... It didn't just happen to find you. The Maroons have always done whatever it takes to survive. And we do most anything that pays hard coin. The day your family was killed, a man came to us, offering good money to find your father's house. So one of our scouts led him there. The man was Neville. came back after they had gone. 
I found you there, bleeding your hand gone. The raven already there, watching you, almost as if he was guarding you from me. You led Neville to my family? To my father? This whole time, my whole life, and you never told I'm me? Sorry. sorry? You're sorry? Christopher, I've tried to make up for what I've done. I've tried to raise you like my own son. Now, you know everything. There are no more secrets. I see what's in your eyes, Christopher. And I, 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 I accept it. Please, though, try to understand. One day, please try and forgive me. should have kept us from me, Marcus. But you didn't kill them. It was Neville. Christopher, I... But you still fed us, Tom. I know, Christopher. Every time I look at you, I think about what I've done. I kept this box from you. Because I feared you'd be consumed by revenge. I feared the contents would lead you down a dark path. But it didn't matter. I failed. This box is yours now. I hope someday you can forgive me, Chris.
all this fun. Besides, I'm still curious. Why set your sights on me? Who are you? I'm here to kill you, old man. Not satisfy your fucking curiosity. This is...
fight well, boy. I haven't had a fight like this since... Oh, of course. Of course. No wonder you look so familiar. You're Callahan's boy, aren't you? Come to get revenge for your poor mummy and daddy. How quaint. I see you've even replaced the hand we took. Nice touch. Very fierce. You're gonna have a much harder time replacing your head, Neville. You should have never come back to the Caribbean. You'll find me hot. Here, boys. 